This is Dr. Pepper Friday Night Rivals. <clears throat> and during the game. Week six of Friday Night Rivals in a week where most teams are out of the region, but you do have a lot of rivalry games like the one we have here tonight. It's the Battle of I-10, Daphne and Spanish Fort matching up tonight. Daphne, a 7A school, Spanish Fort, a 6A school, but uh, you can throw that out when these two teams <laughs> get together, right, Dan Brennan? Yeah, you can throw it all out for sure. They had some big games through the years, many of them on TV, some on national TV. Yeah, and this has been a rivalry that's been dominated by Spanish Fort, but I think if you're Daphne coming into this game, you're thinking you really, you really got a chance. You, you've got the new quarterback you'll talk about in a second, but the one thing Spanish Fort has going, coming in, they really are playing well defensively. Yeah, they always do, and they are playing de defensively very well again this year, and Markel Kyer is one of the reasons you got to have lockdown corners. Mm -hmm. He is there. He's number seven. He's got decent size, great speed, great technique, really good football player. And that's what you're going to see on this uh, Spanish forward defense. A lot of very good football players all on the field. Yeah, and, you know, sometimes a, a player comes to a team, whether it's that it moves into the area at the beginning of the season or comes in a few weeks later and kind of changes the team. Definitely got a player changed the whole region. I mean, it, it, it just changed everything around in 7A Region 1. And we were here when it happened, mm -hmm. kind of, sort of, right? His big coming out party against Alma Bryant was right here on UTV 44. Jamar Malone, he's six foot two, 210 pounds. He's got about 800 yards and seven touchdowns. Those are numbers on on the paper. You know, you have to see him to really. He passes the eye test. Uh, <laughs> yes, he does. He passed ours from the beginning. And then when we actually watched him take snaps uh, during sc scrimmage and play, fabulous player. Yeah, it's a big rivalry between these two schools. It's homecoming here for Daphne as well, so should be a great matchup on Friday Night Rivals here at Jubilee Stadium. It's Spanish Ford taking on the Daphne Trojans, and kickoff comes up right after this. Jubilee Stadium here in Daphne, Alabama, as we get ready for our non-region matchup tonight. Daphne and Spanish Ford. And let's get our coin toss brought to you by the Mobile County Sheriff's Office here. And so Daphne wins the toss. Daphne defers. They say we're going to put our defense out there first. And Spanish Ford's offense will receive and start things off here. Chase Smith in his second year was an assistant here when they won their first state championship. But his second year after Stinson Robertsdale and Orange Beach and his team coming in with a couple of games already on UTV 44 this year at three and two. There's Kenny King, head coach of the Trojans, eighth a season. Boy, they love him here in Daphne, don't they? Lots to love about Kenny King. So great, great player here, too. He was yep. the first ever Parade All-American. Yep. Remember, remember yep, those? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, out of Daphne High School. Went on to Alabama and played the NFL with the Arizona Cardinals. Nathan Barella with the kick for Daphne. And Nemo Hickson will take it back inside the five, officially at the three. Hickson dances out to the 19, and that's where he'll be stopped. And Spanish forward offense really... Kind of struggling to find their way a little bit, scoring just 17 points a game. Yeah, they, they are. They've got that really good defense. Good thing, right? They had a big win against Blunt that we had on TV, then a big loss against Sarah Lane yep. that we also had from the Hill on TV. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of people in that club, a lot of people already in it. And the Toros, last week, they were in a dogfight out in Theodore. They trailed 3-2 to two in that game, then got a touchdown to win it by a score of 8-3, to three, a big region win. they got another big region challenge next week against St. Paul's, but they'll start it out here tonight. Schamberger off to Nemo Hickson. He was banged up early in the year, and once he comes in, he really can help that offense go. We had a game where we missed him, where he wasn't yep. there. The blunt game. Here's the starters for the Toros, brought to you by Greers. Got Hickson. He's a real go-to guy. Sawyer in the backfield. We'll see Drew Williamson back there as well. Aiden Schamberger, the sophomore quarterback, and they're a little inexperienced up front, but Blake Smith and Bree Blackman are the ones that kind of anchor that line. Keep your eye on the tight end. Chandler as well. And number five, Justin Bonner, the sophomore, is the favorite target of Schamberger early here this year. Schamberger zings that one back out to Hickson, and Nemo Hickson has got the first down up to the 40. So he'll pick up 13 on that one. And Ruth Doctor's first down, I think you see what 
Chase Smith's going to want to do just get it out here quickly against this Daphne defense. We'll talk about that. Yep. We'll talk about that in a minute. Brought to you by Greer's Graham Durant, who takes up a big space in the front. Lambert will really get after you from the edge as well. Gibson, Houston, Johnson, and Camarion Pete. Johnson also in the backfield. That's Keandre, Bradley Thomas, Al Woodard is all everything at strong safety, and Tariq Thomas there as well for the Trojans, who have taken it away seven times on the year. Inside give on first down, gets nowhere, maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Daphne's defense giving up 18 points a game. They gave up 30 last week to the Baker team. Yeah, this is where I'm not sure that... Uh, Spanish Ford's going to be able to win a lot of battles right, right between, you know, the tackles. You'll see a lot of things wide trying to slow this, kind of to, not just slow it down, but tire them out a little bit going sideline to sideline. Yeah, Durant, the, yeah, the, Durant the, there, stuff the hole, and that's what he does really that's well. That's what he does. You do a little misdirection, and Sori can pop out, and it, it, they'll still challenge the middle, but I don't think they're going to live there. There's the tight end Chandler in motion on second and ten. Schamberger with pressure coming now wants to scramble. He's able to pull it down and get across the 45 and now into Trojan territory for another Roof Doctors first down. Picks up 11 and a new set of down for the Toros. Pressure on the quarterback. Have we seen that from Daphne before? <laughs> uh, like all the time. Doing this? 24 <laughs> years? For 24 years, I think we've seen that. It's, uh, it's, it's fun when you watch, especially when you have a, a coach in position for about eighth year now for King. Yep. But you, and Kenny, very much a defensive guy, obviously. He played defense at Daphne in Alabama, the Arizona Cardinals, and uh, he likes to affect the other side of the ball aggressively. Like the decision there by Schamberger with just pull it down quickly and take off. Now zips this one to Sawyer Wilson, and Wilson, good open field tackle as he gets just maybe a yard on there before he was wrapped up and pulled down yeah, right by the back. junior, Camarian Pete. You're right about Woodard. The uh, safety had a great game the last time we were here. Here again, going wide, just need a couple of blocks. They don't get them. And play gets blown up and uh, a gain of only one but again the idea of wide back and forth trying to wear this big front down Wilson who's carried it 71 times now 72 coming in this night just his second catch on the season and now second and nine and he'll go in motion this time out to the right more pressure coming as they set up the screen and it's nearly intercepted and then deflected and grabbed by the offensive lineman is able to get that one on the tip Ah, it was uh, center Ryan Perry watches it. Looks like the screen's going to get picked off right away. And then Perry, who was not the intended receiver, <laughs> no, he was not. Lambert just kind of thought it was going to be incomplete. And then Ryan Perry with his, he's going to go on a limb and say his first career reception. Yep. Up to the 45 and third and five. And now. I think Spanish Fort may have got the Toros to jump there, and it's going to be close. A little bit short of a first down, yeah. but really, boy, really tight. Boy, third and one so much easier than third and six, if that indeed is the call. Yep, that is the call. Chance to extend the drive here, Jim, with a third and yeah. half a yard. It appeared the Trojans were bringing heat again. <laughs> Did it not? Ron Coleman, our referee, with the first call of the night. Yeah, third and boy, about maybe a foot. Yeah. And now they'll bring in Drew Williamson at quarterback. Yeah. Big okay. running back who's going to be starting now on defense at middle linebacker. We'll talk about that. And he converts. He's got the first down and more to the 34 as he picks up six. He's a weapon back there, 268 yards and another Root Doctor's first down. Hey, guess what? For a fourth and a or third and a foot, he's the man for the job. Yeah. He's going to get you a foot. Low snap did a good job to grab that one. And yeah, this offensive line so far here on this first drive for Spanish Fort doing a good job against this. I mean, Daphne's, Daphne's front is, I mean, yep. that's, that's where they make the money on defense. Yep, yep. No, and, and have for a while. Oh, first and 10 again. For the Toros, Schamberger fires that one up, and that was too hot. Went over the head of Justin Bonner. That was a fastball from Schamberger. Really was. Bonner's a good-looking, good-looking player. Yeah, he's their leading receiver with 14 catches on the year. Yeah. He needed a fishing net to catch that one. Yeah. So he had a little 
battle there with Al Woodard. Those two will probably be going at it all night long. Yeah, Woodard's going to find somebody to go at it with. He's got a couple interceptions on the year. Had one in the game against Alma Bryant. We did here on Friday Night Rivals a few weeks ago. Second and ten. Schamberger zips that one and nobody around except guess who? Al Woodard with his third pick of the season. Wow, miscommunication there. Woodard looked like the intended receiver. There wasn't a white jersey around. That's a good football player right there. Three-year starter for this Trojans yes. defense. And a good drive going there by the Toros. And he's got the turnover chain to prove. He came up with a pick as 12 takes it away from 12 here. Somebody's not over. Let's get a look at this again. No, you're right. It was Woodard only. Woodard by himself. Not exactly sure what the young quarterback was looking at. Yeah, Nemo Hickson was yeah, probably seven or eight yards behind him. And, you know, it's, it's always so easy when you're watching. You're like, geez, with the quarterback. But on those timing plays, you're, he was obviously expecting a receiver yep. to be there. And, so we'll see uh, Jar Jamar Malone. He's just a junior, so yeah. don't let that graphic fool you there. He's just a junior. Yeah, he'll be back next year. Only one team in the region is happy about it, as this one goes off the hands of the 10 receiver trying to get it to Nick Clark out of the backfield. Clark with 521 rushing yards on the year. And they really thought he was going to be their whole offense this year. And then you got Jamar Malone who yeah. checks in there. So Malone, your quarterback, Clark. Uh, Gardner and Davis. Davis, the leading receiver with 22 catches already on the season. Fredericks getting his uh, uh, getting a just new returning start there uh, at, as a sophomore. Donahue, Sasser, Stevens, and Luna now starting at right tackle. Stevens and Donahue, both three-year starters up front for this Daphne team. As there's a flag and Ron Coleman will tell us what he saw. Mm. Wow. The Roughing the quarterback. That had to happen quickly. The pass got out of there really fast. Yeah. So a little too aggressive on the first play. From I, didn't, I didn't see it at the time. I didn't either. Malone was a star in Arizona last year, took his team to the 5A state championship, threw for over 4,000 yards, went down to IMG Academy in Bradenton, was backing up down there and said, you know what, I'm going to come play for my longtime family friend, Kenny King. And Malone dumps this one out of the backfield. And good work on the open field. Tackle there as Davis comes up with his first catch tonight, number 23 on the year, but a couple of Toros. Uh, there, as that was actually to Hayden McLaurin, the senior. Yeah, McLaurin, more, more of like an H-back or a tight end coming across. S Spanish Ford defense. Gardner, Freeman, and Thomas McConaughey. Keep your eye on him, number six. He leads the state in sacks with nine and a half. Out of the backfield to Clark. Clark, a nice move, and he's going to get up to the sticks and get another first down. In the game, and the first one for the Trojans here as we approach the halfway point of the first quarter, a roof doctor's first down. You got a lot of kids on the football field. I mean, kids, you know, growing up kids. They're, they're, then you got a man. I mean, yeah. We've watched him for a few years, too. And he's actually slimmed down a little bit and uh, improved his agility and speed. 19th reception of the year. There you go. Malone. Now this one fires and almost intercepted his little miscommunication there. And Josh Powell had that one slip through his hands. And and Malone and his receiver not on the same page there. So second and 10 coming up. Malone, 6'2", 205. Dan talked about he's thrown for over 800 yards coming in, 61 and 94, seven touchdowns and an interception, but he's also rushed it 20 times for 167 yards and four touchdowns. Single, single high safety, so the corners are up, Jim. Malone with the give and... Clark will get two, maybe going to bring up third and eight. Now we got an injured Trojan down there is Drew mm -hmm. Williamson. Yeah, I see it. Came up to make the stop. He's replacing Sterling Dixon, who was lost for the season with a shoulder injury last week. The Alabama commit out the rest of the year, and we'll take a timeout with him here on the field. Scoreless halfway through the first here in Daphne. Mm, see the anguish in yeah. Cooper Donahue's 
base there as he went down across the far, all the way down across the far hash and trying to make it over to the sideline and wanted to come off on his own power. Three-year starter at left guard for this Trojan team. So he just kind of got washed up, and you mm. see that so often. Yeah. Your legs in the wrong place. People's bodies are rolling, and you get caught underneath all that. Yeah. You don't think the, the, the tears are probably not from the pain, more of the maybe realizing what possible loss of yeah. time. So third and seven and a hard count from Jamar Malone, and he gets Cole McConathy. We talked about the state leader in sacks. Got in a little too early there. He's got 15 tackles for losses on the year. Offered by the – says he's going to Louisville, but I just – season he's having, you got to think there's more – There'll be more. More people coming. Yeah. Go ahead, got your head. Dad played at LSU. I believe it was Louisiana player, player of the year. Of the year. Yeah, Mr. Wow. Football in Louisiana. Wow. Well, that's not nothing. Third and four. Malone on the keeper, rolling out, trying to get away from McConaughey, who had a handful of jerseys, and he lunges forward, and he's going to pick up the first down. All but, state versus all state. Yeah, right yeah two, two <laughs> great athletes going at it there. Yeah. He just reverses oh, field. I think he didn't like what he saw here, or yeah, that was it. He was, he was going to let it go, and he, he decided smartly to go back to the left. Boy, he was looking at the stick as he made that dive yeah. too to get it there. He rushed for 12 touchdowns and 937 yards last year, and as a sophomore, Noel Mazzoni was his offensive coordinator. We talked about that last That's time. Yeah. Ole Miss, Auburn, and but he wanted to go. Find some new challenges. Looking over the middle. That one tipped in the air and incomplete. Spanish Fort playing pretty good defense against this uh, talented receiver bunch. And he's not getting really wide open throws like we saw against Alma Bryant. Yep. So, looking to come in. This one just off the hands of Antoine Sledge. And... Bring up second and ten for the Trojans. And Powell, the other cornerback, we highlighted Kyer before the game. They're both going to have to play well. This guy can put it on a dime. Yeah, you wonder with the loss of Donahue, with the, if the Toros be able to get some more pressure on us. McConathy comes on this one, fires off complete at the 30, and a straight arm out to the 25. They're going to be good for wow. first down, and they're going to add on more. As Gardner, the sophomore, his fifth catch of the year, then got wrestled down well out of bounds. That's going to be the second 15-yard penalty on this drive to help out the Trojans. You know, when your tackle almost destroys a tent, you <laughs> might get a flag. And that's what, that's what happened here is he just kept going. Look at uh, that. Yeah, that was yeah. a little late. Markel Kyer. And yeah, a very good player, not a very good play. So it was at the 25. Gotta get Ron to turn his microphone on for us. Yeah, they're gonna tack on 15 more at least halfway to the. Yeah, they'll put it down at the 12. We haven't seen much of Clark. We might right here. Again, this is a running back, big, tough guy, but he's lost weight and it's quicker in the hole. And they'll put two backs in there. As they put Scoot Miles as the tail of the tan, almost have. Clark at the fullback yep. position. And now Malone on the keeper, flips it miles out of the backfield. Tries to get to the outside, makes a move, and he's going to step inside the 10 down to about the 9. As miles with his eighth catch of the season. He's got three touchdowns already. Had a big night here on Friday Night Rivals. He did with a, at least one touchdown, maybe two that night against Alma Bryant. Here, he's just got to figure stuff out. It's like, okay, I think I'll go this way here. And finally gets the corner. Nice little stiff arm for the little guy and gets additional yard. It's not a first down, but they did make positive yards, about four and a half or five. Pannoni did a good job to force him to the, to the boundary there, not give him space in the middle. As they're in the Dr. Pepper maroon zone, corner of the end zone, toss, touchdown. Powell with his back to the play, never saw the ball come in. R.J. Daly, the junior, his second touchdown catch of the year. And Malone 
Boy, when you're a quarterback and you, you're able to look and see the, the DB's numbers looking at you from the yep. back of the jersey. Yep. It's automatic go time, right? Yeah, and Malone clean pocket as could be. Goes up over Powell and RJ Daly. 11 catches on the year now and two touchdowns. And Daphne on their first drive. After the turnover, able to capitalize and they'll look to make it 7-0. And the PAT is good. Malone with his eighth touchdown toss of the season. Daly's got two on the year. And Daphne, they've got seven. So Daphne, after they take it away from the... Toros on that opening impressive drive, marches down and goes seven, and it's got the Daphne Band and Palm Squad here excited on our United States Coast Guard School Colors cam. And boy, a 15 yarder after the play. That's three on the opening drive. A 15 against Spanish Four. Yeah, they had a roughing the passer on the first play, then they had the tackle out of bounds that yep. was too much, and then at the end of that one, and so now kicking off from the Toro 45. Mm. Jaden Swiderski. Sounds like a kicker. And he just bangs this one into the end zone. Let's take a look at this touchdown again here, Dan. But Malone, you, you got to get some pressure on him, but he just he gets it out so fast. Sometimes yeah. you have no chance. Yeah, this time they had no chance. And look at the ease with which he throws the football right on the spot. Daly, you know, these guys are probably worn out in practice. He knows these receivers now at this point. And Daly pays him off by making a nice catch, giving Daphne the lead on this homecoming night for yep. the Trojans. Big I, home, I big believe home. it is a, it is a packed house pack, in Sp packed stadium, Spanish yeah. Fort with a big crowd. There's student sections overflowing over there yeah. as well. The Battle of I-10, they like to call this one. As we said, it's been rivalry dominated by the Toros. And now pickup of 12 by Aiden Schamberger on first down, his second big run of the night, well, and they, another Roof Doctors first down. I tell you, they spread everything out, and then it was spread out. Schamberger saw the... The big hole right uh, over the middle and, and takes off. Again, they're going to do a lot of things wide, try to wear this team out a little bit. They're a big team, big team up front. So that's the idea. But they will occasionally then counter back with some runs off guard and off tackle. Keep it off to Wilson. Wilson was hit in the backfield, but able to bang past the original line of scrimmage and up to about the 37. Nothing really unusual about... Wilson playing Daphne and being hit in the backfield. Yeah. They just bring numbers all the time. And they've got, they've, you know, in fact, they've got three down linemen that are really good by themselves. Yeah, Wilson did a good job to uh, evade that ankle yep. tackle there because otherwise that was going to be a big loss and picks up four and second to six. And Spanish Ford had a good-looking drive going on that, on, that first, on that first drive. And then the mystery throw. Yeah. Schamberger far side, Nemo Hickson, and that's going to be good for another first down. Good to see him back. Oh, boy, yeah, he's just, he's, he's a dynamic player, just a junior. Another Roof Doctors first down here. You see how often he's getting the ball, how often he's being targeted. Really a great catch right at the sticks. And here goes the Ford again, trying to move it on Daphne. Uh, up at the 43. And new downs for the Toros. So we're inside three minutes to go here. Schamberger on the design run and moves it forward up to the 45. Gets a couple. Schamberger on the carry. Schamberger transfer from Gang McGill Tool, and they had a change in the coaching staff from last year to this year. And he said it's uh, time for a fresh start. Mm -hmm. Young sophomore quarterback and dual threat, as we've seen early on. Here he's thrown four interceptions on the year, and 
Now it looks like I'm not going to see Graham coming across too soon for the Trojans. A lot of flags. Against the Trojans. Now, that's Kenny King. Going to bring about a second and three here now. Right at midfield for the Toros. How many nice things can you say about Kenny King? Uh, loves these kids here at Daphne. They love him. And Schamberger. Now he has some time. Bounces. He's got a lot of green. If he could pull it down to the near side and does. He's across the 45 and down to the 42-yard line. I'm going to get another first down. Again, good decision-making there. Just looked down and saw all that green in front of him. You know, against this defense, you got to take it. Yep. And, and he's got the wheels to do that, but you've got no choice. I mean, you've got to take – that's a gift because so often they're going to pin you back where you're going to lose yards. If defensively you see a shot to get some yards, 5, 8, 10, do it. And I think that was Woodard who lost his helmet. They're all everything. Safety. So he'll have to go out for a play if indeed it was him. And first and ten, Sawyer Wilson got tripped up. And he had a little bit of room on that right side. He did. Tripped up and he'll roll well, to carry. about the 40. Yeah, he can, he can really go. This kid's got quickness and this is how he runs. One cut, see you later. But he just, yeah, nice ankle tackle there. Yeah. That usually doesn't get him down. The yeah, they'll actually mark him back at the, about the 43. So no gain as we're inside a minute to go here in the first. Second and 10 for the Toros and the football is loose and recovered by Daffy. Wow. Two turnovers on their opening two drives. And the Toros turn it over again and Daphne with two takeaways here in the first quarter. I don't, I don't think that was with the exchange. I think Wilson had it. He Let's take have, a look here. He didn't have it at the end of the play. Here comes Wilson. Oh, yeah, just, just, absolutely. It was stripped by a defensive lineman at the line of scrimmage. And then Kamari and Pete came up with a loose ball. You think of what I'm thinking? Oh, take a shot here, midfield. And you got the quarterback to do it. Just shy of midfield at the 45. Malone instead, maybe a double pass. Look into the near side, wide open and slipping down. Kobe Donnelly, if he could have kept his feet, he'd have been able to get it off, but they threw it to John Davis, the leading receiver, but you saw, you saw that one being set up yep. with a double pass. Wide open. And Davis just kind of underthrows it, really. His feet are kind of a mess there as Pick, he's trying to get it off. Picks up 25, and Daphne up to the Toro 30. Malone, now he'll step up in the pocket. Pressure from the backside, and McConathy's got another sack on the season. There's a flag as well up at the top of the screen. And you just see why McConathy is such a handful. 6'5", 235. He's been a, he's been producing since he was a sophomore. So I, I'm with you. I'm like, uh, anybody else want to talk to this kid? Yeah, you can see the he's got the frame. Yeah, he's got the lineage. They're gonna wave off that flag here. The flag is he plays with his with his hand to the ground. You know, so maybe maybe the concern is that at his frame they wouldn't want to be able to move in space and. Defend people in the pass. Not yep. sure, but he he can do that. He can rush the passer. So second and twelve coming up here when quarter number two starts as Daphne just lets the clock run out after the McConathy sack and Toro defense can have to get a stop here after the offensive is given up twice early on and Daphne on top 7-0 Malone to Daly and the Trojans on top after one. We have teamed up with Dr. Pepper and Coca-Cola Bottling Company United to bring you the ultimate high school football experience. Stay tuned for our Dr. Pepper one-of-a-kind player of the game and winners 
belt, too. That presentation at the end of the show, the end of the game tonight. A belt that the Iron Sheik himself would have loved. <laughs> Jim Cox, Dan Brennan up here in the press box at Jubilee Stadium in Daphne. Huge crowd here on homecoming night. And the Toros, they moved all well, turned it over twice there in that first quarter. And now Daphne with a second and 12. Malone, again, keeps it on a play fake and able to dump this one out of the backfield, able to get it off and out of bounds inside the 20. As that one goes to McLaren again, his second catch of the yeah. night. Another Roof Doctor's first down on second and 12. Didn't see much of him against uh, mm -mm. the last game we had against Alma Bryant, but he's been right in the middle of the uh, playbook tonight. Just dragging across, H-back, tight end kind of player, and finds himself wide open, just gets mixed up and lost. Firmly in the Dr. Pepper maroon zone here for Malone and the Trojans. Clark in the backfield. Yeah, like Play Clark. clock down to three. He's going to have to hurry. And now mm. moving too soon was R.J. Daly. Huh. I think he might have been looking for Daly in the corner again. Maybe. Though. Of course, Daly may have been looking at the play clock right in front of him and thinking it's a, well, they gotta, they got to be snapping it. Somebody's got to go. Yeah. Uh, Ball start against the Trojans. Yeah, this part of the field, too. You got a great quarterback, but you really have a very good running back, too. Yep. And, and great area of the field where you can utilize Clark, who's quick and strong and willing to mix it up. They give it to Clark. Clark right up the middle. Clark into the end zone. Touchdown, Trojans. There you go. That very effective back. He knows how to play the game. He's a senior. I think he's started two or three years now. Lost a couple of pounds so he could do that. Be quicker. AMS Calvert touchdown. Innovations in steel. Strengthened by people. Now hiring at AMS Calvert jobs.com. And seventh touchdown of the season for Clark. And boy, good job up front. Boy, just look, you know, Elijah Stevens there just turning his body to the outside. Mm -hmm. Engaged there and opened up the hole right off his backside. Then it was Walton to safety and Clark one on one. And uh, Walton couldn't stay in front of him. That's what I say. <laughs> I'm yeah. saying there's kids on the field and there's a man as well. And PAT is good, and the Trojans have taken advantage of two takeaways. And they lead it by two scores here tonight in the Battle of I-10 on Friday Night Rivals. Nick Clark with the touchdown says, I hear you, Dan Brennan. I hear you. I hear you. Get ready. He should, we, he should hear his name. The audience should hear his name and just watch him play, man. He, but, all right, so if you're Spanish for here, you, you, you got to take care of the football. You have any two? Two turnovers. Yep. Three 15-yard penalties. Yep. I mean, yeah, Daphne looks pretty good, but, boy, you're helping him every which way you look. And Hickson and Markel Kyer deep for the Trojans. This one will go to Kyer at the five. Little stutter step. And out to about the 20. They've, they've, they've moved it well on the first two drives. By host of Trojans to be first and 10, finish fourth. Schamberg is five of seven. He's also got that pick. He's been running the ball well as also. Yeah, four rushes, 34 yards. He's their top rusher tonight. But, yeah, they, they've gotten first downs and something bad. It, it ultimately, is going to happen to them around midfield as so far. Let's see what happens now. From the 19. Uh, <laughs> Kenny King's kids just want to come whenever. Yeah, I think might have been some. Was there some movement up front on the? No, uh, Ron Coleman is emphatically. Oh, he's not. He's, he's not. Not the line judge, but. Just, 
Tell us, Ron Coleman. So two flags on the play. Okay, false start. I think it'll be a 15 yard, maybe a personal foul for charging in. Ah, yeah. There you go. On Daphne. Personal foul against the Trojan. So I think they're saying hey, a little movement up front can't come just barreling in there. We'll be a kind of sheriff's office scoring drives for a scoring drive, four plays, 55 yards, minute 24, and the touchdown run there by Nick Clark. So they'll back him up five. And then the it's dead a net, ball. Net gain of 10. Yeah, then they'll move him 15 okay. there. So it moves it up to the first down now. Yep. Up to the 18 yard line. And Ron Coleman doing a good job going over and explaining things to the. I think I think what Ron Coleman's saying there is hey, I don't want any more of oh, that. Of just charging through from either side yep. on a false start. By the offense. Yeah, that's, that's good. Or an offside by the defense. Good point. He, Ron Coleman knows the, the rivalry here. This one over the middle, and that one knocked down is trying to come to Bonner and Portland. Schamberger's pass is incomplete. He's in the middle of his zone, and I mean, he's, he's in the middle of it because that was Schamberger tried to fit that in, and I don't think it was there. It just, for the offense, you hate when a ball gets tipped because that. Oh, yeah. So many bad things can happen. Especially you're throwing it over the middle of the field. Second and ten here for the Toros. Three and two on the year. This is a non-region matchup here in week six. A lot of non-region games on the schedule. Wilson goes in motion and Schamberger says, I'm just going to pull it down. And he's going to get another first down and more as he's across the 50 all the way up to the 40-yard line. 32 on the run for Aiden Schamberger and another Roof Doctors first down. Yeah, I mean, you use what you got, right? Quarterback draw, let him use his wheels. And he's a very, very effective runner. Yeah, he's just in open space. Not a huge kid, about 165 pounds, but okay, kind of slight. But as Vic Lockett, you say he's got those skinny ankles and when he's <laughs> in, in midfield yeah. and open field. He got about 20 yards more than I thought he was gonna get. All the way up to the 40 of the Trojans. Schamberger looking to air it out, goes far sideline. He drops it in the bucket in. Are they going to say touchdown or they just put it down at the one? Yeah, I think you can mark yeah, it right down at the Myers. one. Brought down near the goal line. Gabe Myers, the speedster. The what a ball from Schamberger. What Myers could go, huh? He just put a bunch of air under this one. Bobbled it, but held on. Let's look here. Mm. Well, right outside the pylon. I, I, I would, I would not to complain about it. I take it at the one and, and let's they, go. They bring Williamson back in at quarterback. Yeah. Williamson on the right side. And he's in for the Toro touchdown. Close to a sure thing with Williamson. Williamson AMS Calvert Mary. touchdown for yeah, the touchdown Toros. Toros. They needed an answer like that, Dan Brennan. They really did, and, and who saw it coming? They were at their own 20 to start that drive, and suddenly. Big run, big pass. Big run, big pass, big penalty to give him a first down. Aminus, Calvert touchdowns yeah. all season here. Innovations in steel, strengthened by people. Now hiring at Aminus Calvert Jobs.com. And Cam Lytle on for the PAT. Williamson will hold. It's just like that, it's 14 7. Two minutes good. into the second. Your score. Impressive That's long ball yeah. by Schamberger, and then Williamson finishes off the drive for the Toros to cut the lead in half. Jim Cox, Dan Brennan here in Daphne tonight. Spanish Fort. Little and the, the kicking for Spanish Fort. Toros, uh, Spanish Fort Toros and Daphne here on Daphne's homecoming. Cam Lytle to kick off for Spanish Fort. U.S. Army kickoff. Scoot Miles. One of the deep men for. The Trojans and Lytle's got a big leg. 
As this one make it into the end zone, it does. That's a Chase Smith always tells Lytle, he said, you put it put it in the end zone, that's a that's a win for us. That's his ninth touchback on the year. It's a win for you, especially against a Daffy team that uh, traditionally has a lot of speed. And you'd rather just let them set up shop can't, at the 20-yard uh, line. Can't emphasize again that, that that answer on that drive for, for Spanish Fork. You know, you have, I mean, down two scores and quarterback throwing an interception. You're running back and fumbled once and you answer back there and cut the lead in half. And Exceptional run by Schamberger. Yep. And then a great throw by Schamberger and Myers outruns the defense, gets it to the one, and Williamson does the rest. And Malone and the Trojans back out here at the 20. Malone again on the keeper. Again comes out of the backfield up to the 26. Is able to get that one off third time tonight. The senior Hayden McLaren. Pass is complete to McLaurin. And that Toro's scoring drive. Four plays, 82 yards, just a minute 18. Capped off by the Williamson plunge in for the touchdown. Cut the lead in half and we'll give McLaurin five on first down. Malone, middle of the field, able to get that one complete to his favorite target, John Davis, and Davis all the way across the 40 and knocked out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Did you notice it looked like Davis was kind of sitting down in the zone a little bit? And, 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 and then he ran through the pass. At first it looks like there might have been some Oh, okay, he, he, he ran the pattern, but another kid with good speed. Yeah, picks up 44. And you, know, you, just, you, you watch Malone, and uh, you know, he, he does not want to give it up running back. He has this, he's like, I, I really want a chance to pass it in. Yep. And you can see why. Oh, yeah, I mean, you, you can see. <laughs> you can see exactly why, because he's so pinpoint. Up to the 30, and this time he will give it off to Willoughby and his first carry tonight for the junior. Willoughby on the carry. He'll pick up about eight. Bring up second and short well, for the big, Trojans. Such a big play for the Trojans, getting him right back down into scoring position against Spanish Fort. It's got to be a little disheartening for the Trojans. For the uh, for the Toros, I should say. Brings up a second and short. You can look for Clark here. That'd be my guess. Willoughby stays Willoughby's in the back. In, okay. yeah, stays in the backfield. McLaurin comes. In motion, right back to Willoughby who dances and he's gonna get thrown down. That was Drew Williamson in there and not gonna get to the first down and Willoughby Williamson had to replace, as we said, Sterling Dixon, the Alabama commit was the 3A lineman of the year last year from his linebacker spot and transferred over and then got hurt last week. and. Newt Gardner, uh, Newton Gardner, the other defensive end for this Toro team, also doing a good job crashing down there to grab a hold, and Williamson finished him off. And Spanish Fort's always got a bunch, or has to have a bunch of guys. 6'1", 210, interchangeable tackle, rather a and or linebacker. Illegal hands to the face against oh, wow. the Toros. Illegal hands to the face against the, the Toros. That'll be half the distance to the goal line and into the Dr. Pepper Maroon zone on this Roof Doctor's first down. Put it up at the 11 for Malone and crew. Willoughby stays in the backfield. But just the poise of the young man. Oh, yeah. You just love, love his moxie out on the field. He's just been trained to be a very good quarterback, and he is. Malone, this one batted up in the air. Good pressure. That time by Malone's pass is incomplete. the Toros. McConathy in there. It's six five, those big long arms able to knock that one down on first down. Trying to swing it back out to the near boundary. But was it McConathy? Yeah, I'm sure it was now. Yeah, yeah it was. And, and you know, it's great awareness by him to stop, get the arms up, yep. and get that one knocked away. Malone looking, corner, touchdown. C.D. Gardner. 
Uh, keep say no? Watch. Did say no? Well, certainly there was uh, some but somebody on the Toro sideline saying no, and looks like that's going to be the call. To oh, it looked like he was he was selling it. I bought it. Let's watch Malone here. You can ask for your money back now. Yeah, away from us, we couldn't. Mm -hmm. And he, he said, "Yeah, I caught." Of course, the receivers never <laughs> never been one they, they didn't think they they ne caught. Right? Never fib. All right, so third down here. Malone now rolls out to the right. He'll pull it down himself. And he's going to get pulled down by Newton Gardner. Good pursuit by Spanish Ford. On the carry. We've seen good Malone coverage too in the end zone. Good coverage, and then we've seen him get loose and there do some damage. Of course, there's a flag on the play. No kidding. Did that one come in late at the end of that one? I, I thought I saw over on the on the far side at the end of the play. Yeah, well. You don't have to call everything. <laughs> I mean, it, let's see. It might have been a legitimate flag. Uh, my guess would be it was. Ron Coleman. Holding De against the defensive Toro. holding. Uh, well, you're talking about the good coverage. It's Brings amazing it. the way Chase doesn't lose his stuff over there. Yeah, brought an eye roll. A five-yard penalty still brings up third down for Daphne. So they'll make it a third down and about four for Daphne. So they can get a first down at the one, but they're thinking end zone here. Willoughby in the backfield. Malone slips it right side. Touchdown, Toros. McLaurin, his fourth right, catch of the night. And a touchdown, Daphne. They worked him into the playbook tonight, didn't they? Sure did. And basically the same play or, or a variation of it. Just kind of sliding out there, getting lost. And and uh, an easy touchdown. All of his catches have actually been easy in the throws. So he was in blocking. Yep. And they just lost him. AMS Calvert, touchdown. AMS Calvert Innovations in Steel, strengthened by people and now hiring it. AMS Calvertjobs.com. And McLaurin's also the holder. Or I should say he's on the end there as John Davis is the holder for the PAT. And Daphne gets the lead back up to 21-7. Five minutes into the second here. Take a look at the other local games going on last night. Gulf Shores with a win over Murphy. Brian and Robertsdale tonight. Dothan and Baker, that's a good matchup between two top-ranked teams in 7A. Davidson and BC Rain, Foley and Saraland. Saraland was on top, 21-0 in the second in that one already. Mary G in Baldwin County, Blunt and Williamson matching up here tonight. That's a good rivalry between those two schools. St. Paul's. And Faith Academy, St. Paul's on top, 14-0 right now in that one. Opelika and Theodore. Alberta taking on Northview and Washington and LaFleur tonight. Monroe County, Escambia County. Thomasville and Jackson and Mobile Christian and Orange Beach doing battle tonight. As is McGill and St. Michael. Mary G leads Baldwin County, 21-7. See the rest of the games taking place a lot of those up north of us here tonight and Kyer unable to get away as he tried to reverse course and it's going to be brought down, brought down around the Johnson 10. On the speed on speed, Jim. Andre Houston on the tackle. Let's take a look at the touchdown there, McLaurin. Boy, he's a weapon that seems to have Built some chemistry with Malone here. Yeah. Having a big night tonight on UTV 44. So this is definitely one of those nights that kid will never forget. Might have a reason to jump around, right? <laughs> Listed as a linebacker, but you can see he's being used on the offensive side of the uh, field tonight and uh, being used very well. Backed up at the 10 are the Toros. Sawyer Wilson up the middle and Wilson. Going to pick up a 
Toro first down. He'll get 16 up to the 26-yard line. Good run to start this drive. Roof Doctor's first down. Maybe not a burner. Pretty, good, pretty quick. And a churner. Yeah, one of those workhorse type kids too. Yep. Just wants to. And it's a big hole. Yep. Well done by Spanish Ford. So put it at the 26 for the Toros here as we approach the halfway point of quarter number two and right back to Wilson and penetration that time by the Trojans and nowhere. Really Wilson on the carry, Johnson on the stop. No gain on the play, brings up second and ten. That was Jaden Lee who came in and got the stop there for the Trojans with no gain. Schamberger is uh, six out of nine, an interception and 69 yards. Far side complete and a big hit over on the Spanish Ford sidelines as Gabe Myers, who had the big pass is complete to Myers. catch on that last drive. Third and six. So third down six coming up six plays 80 yards on that Mobile County Sheriff's Office scoring drive for the Trojans to build the lead back up to two touchdowns. Let's go Trojan Nation get behind this defense here on this big third down. And third down and about seven. And Chase Smith didn't like something there pre-snap so the Spanish Fort coach takes a timeout. We'll take him Take one with him. 21-7. Trojans on top here in the second Jubilee Stadium. Tonight's game brought to you in part by uh, Andy Citron. Since 2016, Andy Citron Injury Attorneys has partnered with Friday Night Rivals, supporting student athletes and furthering education. Once again, Andy Citron's going to award a $5,000 scholarship to one of our scholastic athletes. And AMNS Calvert Innovations and in Steel Strengthened by People. Now hiring at AMNS Calvert Jobs.com. Third, third and seven for Schamberger and the Toros. They'll roll them out to the right. Now they want to float it back to the left. Able to get this one complete off to Wilson, the tight end. And Wilson going to dive forward and he's going to pick up the Toro first down. Like that play call. I like to play call a lot. Once again, a tight end getting lost. Wilson's got good size. He's a good athlete, and he he was going to get you the needed yards because he was going to have a confrontation here at the sticks, and he wasn't afraid of it. Dropped the shoulder and yep. made it to the sticks, and Roof Doctor's first down for Chandler Wilson. When I first met him. If he dropped the shoulder, it wouldn't hurt because he was four. <laughs> well, uh, you and uh, <laughs> he could have yeah, he could have worked maybe, me over pretty good. Maybe. Sawyer Wilson this time looking to get around the right edge. Cuts it back in the middle. Bounces off a tackle. And he's going to do nice work to get a pickup of a nine as he bounced off Durant. But not easy to Wilson do. And they're going to get him actually all the way up Johnson to the stick. Give him 10 on a first down. Yeah, good run by another the tough Spanish, Spanish Fort Spanish kid. Fort. And there's the bounce off the big nose guard. And this could be a nice drive here. To end, uh, you know, not to end the half necessarily, but on the back end of the uh, second period. Yeah, up to the 46. Schamberger fires that one. Nemo Hickson, good hands to pull that rocket yeah. down. Schamberger's pass is complete. Chase, Chase Gibson was out there in coverage. And I was just thinking we hadn't seen Nemo lately. Uh, no pun intended. And, uh, but Nemo does a good job to get the hands up and pull that one in. You're trying to, you're finding Nemo? <laughs> so... Yeah, yeah Schamberger did on that one. That's a great catch by Hickson. It's a little game, but uh, you'll take it. Good effort. Yeah, up to the 49. And did they maybe not get that one off? Right. Wow, I didn't think nope. that was. False start. Okay. Illegal <laughs> procedure. He, he looked like he's bad at it. Yeah, I mean, uh, Ron Coleman with the editorializing there with the facial expressions. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I, but we on. all get frustrated at a pre-snap penalty, I right? I guess, I guess. 
coaches, broadcasters, officials. Got to march it off here, guys. Yeah, he's having a conversation with side judge on the other side. Mm -hmm. nope, now they will back it off. And Ron Coleman says, play on. So that puts the Trojans behind the sticks at second and 11. Daphne will get the ball to start the third. So if you are Spanish War, you would love to, to wind this one almost all the way. Yeah. All the way down on this drive if you could. I bring Hickson in the backfield. Snap high. Schamberger able to corral himself, and he gets it off to Sawyer Wilson, who gets it back to about the line of scrimmage. But that was disaster averted there for the Toros. It was diverted. It was averted. But you know what? It might have been, been the right play call, too. Wilson needed one block, and he had a chance to certainly get the first down but by the time everything's all straightened out that thing is discombobulated and it's, isn't it funny how just one little yep hiccup yeah one hiccup little. in the middle of a play drives the timing completely haywire that's the spanish fort student body across the way there's a packed house on the spanish fort side over here at daphne tonight as well wilson sets up to the tight end of the near side schamberger steps up now wants to pull it down but pressure from the backside he'll get dropped for a sack Nowhere to go as Lambert, the sophomore, gets his third sack of the season. And well, they're coming off the edge, Jim, and you just see that pressure in the middle, and then there's suddenly, in a blink, there's really nowhere to go. Wow. Lambert just pushes off the block. Pete was in there. He's played well, the junior here tonight, and... Toro's just letting this one wind down before Gardner on for the punt. Angles it to the near side. And, wow, that was a short, short kick. We'll see how far they mark it up. All the way past the 30, still going up to the 36-yard line. Sounds about right, yeah. So just a 21-yard punt. They were trying to kick it away from miles and they kicked it away from him all right mm -hmm. boy you see cooper donahue getting loaded up on the cart there and they got the brace on the right knee and you can see that young man was in a lot of pain and speed bump not helping um you just see it in his face that he it's like he knew something was yep something was really not well Trojans get it back, middle of the field complete. Able to get that one to Davis up to the 45 yard line. Oh, man, to not even Davis. Oh, no. Back to McLaurin again. Yeah. Excuse me. Not a fan of the Daphne black and purple jerseys here. I get it. But McLaurin. Picks a, up 19. What a, what a game he's having. You just wondered, did he, you know, it's just a complete surprise. Malone, now he's got some room. He'll pull it down middle of the field, and he'll get hit by two Toro defenders there. Gardner was there along with McConathy. He'll pick up about seven, and he lost his helmet. So he'll have to come out for a play, unless they, if Daphne takes a timeout, they should get the clock stopped with a minute 40 here. And see, Gardner took it here. So I'm not sure. We need our rules expert, Jim Bibby, to... Tell me here, so if they take the time out, does he still have to sit out of play? I know in college you do. Okay, then I'm sure you do here. So, we can put Thibodeau at the, the freshman can put him back at quarterback. Balloon's had a, an efficient night. Not a, not big shots downfield, yeah. No, nothing big like that yet. And our chief of police, Brian Goolsby. But they're also doing just fine. They've got 21 now. They're the city of Japanese, in Spanish Fort territory. For getting the field ready for tonight's game. Minute 40. Left here, and we'll have our IBEW local 505 halftime show coming up at the half. I'll try to get down there. Time to 
catch Kenny Kane before he meets with the team at halftime. Should see Brennan's security detail to get him out of the box and down to, <laughs> down to the field. It's something. Well, it's different every week. It's a different, different group of security at all the different stadiums. Yeah. I'm not going to grade anybody. Yeah, so I could. J.J. Thibodeau will. So Thibodeau ran out. So they, Malone must be able to come back in after the timeout. Okay. Thibodeau was out there, and then he was like, oh, now. Now they're gonna. I think they're gonna say no. He can't come out there, because Ron Coleman they blowing the whistle, and I think that's what maybe Spanish Fort's benches was talking about as well. Ron Coleman trying to. I think Ron feels we didn't need this discussion late in the first half. Yeah, so uh, Thibodeau thought the freshman ran out there like he was gonna take the snap. So interesting, if he would have taken the snap, would that have been a penalty? Yeah, well, that's what I'm wondering. I, I, I don't. So he's going to stay out there. Okay. And now Chase, Chase Smith on the other side is very, very heated. He, I think he, I think he's with us saying. Got to sit well, down. Yeah. And so now Malone wants to fire it over the middle to add some insult to injury. Fires it over the middle for a roof doctor's. First down, that time it is Davis. Got to say, these kids catch the ball, too. This is a rocket. Davis a little stutter fake in. and Good job holding on to as Walton was trying to pry it loose. Oh, yeah. Davis made the uh, – he'll catch the football. All right, so now Ron Coleman had gone and – well, that's where we could really use Ron to turn on his – oh, a sideline warning. All right. Sideline warning against the Toros. So the result of the play the is first good down for to wind the clock with a minute 25 left here. And at the 27, Clark in the backfield. Clark will take it. And Gardner, good job crashing down on there. They've done a good job against the run tonight. Spanish Ford is not been too leaky defensively aside from that one touchdown run by Clark. And inside a minute here for the Trojans Malone. Oh, look at the opening in front of him. Malone pulls it down. Rumbles, takes a hit and he's in for the Trojan touchdown. Malone 27 yards. Boy, the C's just parted there for Malone. And yeah, and you saw what kind of an athlete he is. Wide open and had to absorb the hit down at the two. But an AMS Calvert touchdown for Malone, but just watch it all open up here right in front of him. He knows what to do. He sees the goal line, he sees the goal post, and he says, that's where I'm going, right there. And now they try to go for two, and they do not get it. Amonis Calvert. Innovations in steel no strengthened by no people good. now hiring Amonis Calvert Jobs. Your score, .com. Seven, Daphne, and so it'll stay at 27 the for, for the Trojans. Drive. And they lead at 27 7, and they'll have the ball to start the third quarter as well. And Spanish Ford will have just 41 seconds here. to close out the first half. St. Paul's on top of faith, 16-0. So we'll watch here on the two-point conversion. They go with the direct snap to Davis, and Davis dove toward the goal line, but Javante Walton put a big hit on him from the Toros to stop him. To keep it at... 27 to 7 as Malone looks on at the iPad there. McGill Tulin leads St. Michael 28 17. First ever matchup between those two, I believe. And now Daphne going to be offside on the kick. 
And they'll have to kick it again back at the 35. And Nemo Hickson will come up five yards closer as again this young man, Jamar Malone, led his Arizona 5A team to a state championship last year. Over 4,000 yards passing there. Then transferred down to IMG Academy and and looked like he was going to see a lot of playing time this year. And his family, longtime friends of Coach Kenny King from his Arizona days. And so we said, heck, yeah, I'll come up here to the Gulf Coast and play. He's got offers from Arizona, Cal, Iowa State, Louisville, Miami, Oregon, Tennessee, UNLV, Utah, Virginia Tech, just to name a dozen. And this one angles to Kyer up the left side for the Trojans. And he's across the... 30 and on the back on that touchdown Malone just looked to his right and all of a sudden it was wide open and nobody in the middle of the field and the first and ten took the late hit the at the goal line. but he was able to hold on and picks up his fifth rushing touchdown of the year and he's got his team after that five play 63 yard scoring drive Brought to you by the Mobile County Sheriff's Office. Just a minute 27. He's got his team on top by 20 here on homecoming. And Toros try a little end around here to Gabe Myers, the speedster. And Myers on the carry. Clock will continue He'll to run. And I think stop. Spanish World will just be happy to let this one go to all zeros, and they'll head back to regroup here at halftime, down by a score of 27 to seven. And at halftime, your score, Spanish Fort seven, Gaffney 27. An impressive first half. Brought to you by the Waterfront Restaurant. By the Trojans as we wait for Coach Kenny King to make his way over to Dan Brennan down on the sideline. He's having a little talk with Nick Clark as one of his assistant coaches there as well. And now Jared Kihas on the camera, getting everybody all lined up. And let's send it down to Dan Brennan and Coach Kenny King. Coach Kenny Han King at uh, halftime. What do you think about your team's performance in the first two quarters? Um, I think the guys uh, came out and played well uh, in the first half, but again, it's just the first half. I mean, we was in the situation last year. It was up 15-0 at half, and um, we had a disappointing loss. Um, them, them guys rallied uh, back um, in the second half, man, and beat us. So, again, man, our message is, hey, we had a great first half, but let's go and have a great second half. Right, maybe I'll see you after the game. Absolutely. Thank you now. All right. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Coach King. Halftime score 27 7. Daphne on top of their rivals just to the north across I 10, the Spanish Fort Toros. is the IBEW Local 505 Halftime Show. Dan Brennan along with uh, Jennifer Berry. She's here because it is Childhood Cancer Month and uh, she was involved with Kristen Box at uh, Spanish Ford High School. Good to see you. A fundraiser you all were involved in. Tell everybody why you're involved and let's talk about the success of the fundraiser. Yeah, sure. Um, well, it's, like you said, September is Shot of Cancer Awareness Month and we are wrapping up all of the events we've been taking place in this month. And, um, you know, Caroline was a student at Spanish Fort High School and she passed away Thanksgiving morning of 2018. So Spanish Fort High School has just been a huge supporter of us. That is the school that she went to last. And, um, you know, my friend Kristen came up with a great idea for a fundraiser this year and um, Pulled it off, huh? <laughs> yes, we had a fundraiser for the Barry Strong Foundation called Stop the Music. We um, raised a little over $1,500. 
We also reached out to Daphne High School to partner with us, and they had a fundraiser, the Mr. DHS, and they also raised $1,600 for the Barry Strong Foundation to, for awareness, um, cancer research, and to help local families. And we're hoping that next year, both schools can do the same thing and partner and hopefully spread it around Baldwin County. Uh, not a better cause out there than saving the lives of children. I'm sorry for your loss. Congratulations on your fundraiser and uh, hopefully many, many more. Thank you so much. The best Thursday night lights and Friday night rivals highlights from across the country. Boom, looks over the middle, has a man wide open, caught at the 10, making a move, oh. hurtling into the end zone. Touchdown, Hurricanes! Jalen Moore breaks one, Pezzi's, Moore is loose, breaks another. Come on, Jalen, cut it back. Jalen Moore, not one, not two, not three, but four touchdowns. Looking to throw, pressure, oh! he gets hit! Oh, oh my, my goodness! goodness. See, halftime score 27 7. Daphne on top of Spanish Fort. They've been impressive here tonight. Took advantage of a couple of turnovers there in the first quarter that staked them out to a 14 0 lead and tacked one on there in the second and then one right at the end of the second quarter to build the lead up to 27 to 7 here in our local 505 IBW halftime show. Take a look here at our schedules tonight for Spanish Fort. Opened up the season with a loss to their 7A foe just down the road here in Baldwin County, 17-14. Then the game here on Friday Night Rivals, they beat Blunt 44 to nothing. And they came from behind to beat Baldwin County 14-13. And the game we also had on UTV 44, they lost to Sarahland 49-7. And then they won on the road last week, 8-3 to three against Theodore in a region game and got the rivalry game here tonight. Then they've got more region battles coming up. St. Paul's is playing really well. They lead Faith at the half, 16-0. McGill Tulin leading St. Michael as well. And you see as they close out the schedule and the standings, Sarah Land up on top of everybody this year. They're about to go to 6-0. They're up big at the halftime over Foley. That's a non-region game and Spanish Fort will stay at three and one in the region heading to next week. Theodore three and one in the region. They're one loss to Spanish Fort. St. Paul's two and one. McGill two and two and one. Baldwin County, Blunt, Robertsdale and Murphy rounding out the region. We're looking at that schedule to see who Spanish Fort still has to play. They played a tough schedule thus far so they've still got McGill, they've got Murphy, they've got Robertsdale on the schedule after this. And as their 6A top 10, how about the win for Clay Chalkville last night? They beat Thompson on ESPN 2 by 3, 36 33. Sarahland, the top team in, the, in 6A thus far, defending state champions Hillcrest, Tuscaloosa, Parker, Muscle Shoals, Hartzell, Mountain Brook, Oxford, Helena, and Theodore rounding out. The top 10 in 6A is homecoming festivities continuing on here at the half here at Daphne. Take a look at what the Trojans have. They opened up with a shutout against Murphy, then they lost to Carver Montgomery, and then it all changed just in that second half. Jamar Malone came in, and then we saw him the next week against Alma Bryant. Then they rolled against Davidson, a tough loss against Baker, who's unbeaten 
33-20 last week. They're off next week. Then they take on the big rivals. Fair hope a game we'll have here on UTV 44. Mary G unbeaten as well. Foley, and then they round things out against Hillcrest Evergreen. As the Daphne Trojans look at where they are. As Baker, as we said, unbeaten that win over them in the region. Mary G unbeaten, setting up a big showdown coming up between Baker and Mary G. Davidson two and one, uh, one and two, right behind Daphne Foley. Going to drop down to two and three as they're down big here tonight. Bryant taking on Robertsdale this evening at Fairhope, just one and four on the season and zero oh and two in the region. We'll see them in two weeks in another rivalry game. Thompson, the top team, that going to fall after they lost last night to six A Clay Chalkville Central, Phoenix City, Auburn, Mary G. Stavia Hills, Hewitt Trustville, Dothan Enterprise, Baker, and Sparkman round out your 7A top 10 here in the state of Alabama. And we are back to Daphne right after this special word from our friends at Dr. Pepper. The following segment is sponsored by Dr. Pepper. Well, here at Coca-Cola United, there's something that a lot of people don't understand about the Coke business. They see Coca-Cola and you drink the Coke, it tastes good, it's fun, all that stuff. But what a lot of people don't understand, we have multiple departments within Coca-Cola. We have a marketing department, we have a trucking department, we have my fleet mechanics, we have obviously our delivery merchandisers that deliver the product, we have a sales team, we have a manufacturing department that actually bottles here in Mobile. And then we just last year built a $45 million automated, state-of-the-art automated warehouse here in Mobile. So there are so many different pieces to be able to answer that question of what does it take, what do you need to specialize in. It's really hard, difficult to say, because you can do it all at Coca-Cola. There's a lot of opportunity for everybody. Local 505 IEBW halftime show here on Friday Night Rivals. You see Daphne with the lead over Spanish Ford 27 to 7. And Daphne jumped out to a quick 14 0 lead in this one as their defense was able to force a turnover on the first drive that Spanish Ford was moving the ball well. And then after that, they're able to take over as, take over as Malone finds RJ Daly, the junior, his mm. second touchdown of the season. Then nice Nick, touch. Yep, Nick Clark. Punches this one in. The homecoming king yeah. gets his seventh touchdown of the night, and he's celebrating to his fans. And then a big toss here. Schamberger able to get the speedster Gabe Myers for 44, and that set up Drew Williamson to come in from the one. That made it 14-7. And another turnover, and then it was Hayden McLaurin, who's had a coming out party here on Friday Night Rivals. Big night, five catches in the first half. That one for a touchdown. And then Jamar Malone says, boy, you give me all this well-manicured Daphne Turf in front yep. of me, heading up towards Spanish Fort. I will take it in for the touchdown. Is Take a look at our stats there, boy. Time of possession almost doubled by the Toros. But those turnovers, they've moved it some between the 20s. Penalties too many on both sides. Yeah, we had a, it was a lot of penalties in the first half, including some that really hurt against Spanish Fort. Yep. It was 161 yards on the ground. Impressive by the Toro, uh, by the Trojans. And, and you know, like you said, uh, an efficient half of passing by efficient first half there by Jamar Malone and Morgan Baez, our homecoming queen, and Nick. Nick Clark, our homecoming king. Maryland, We're saying, 22. Nick, we, we, he, we got to get it. I think he needs a more crown encrusted crown, jewel encrusted <laughs> crown, right? I mean, it's, it's a homecoming king yeah, here. Look, I didn't, uh, they didn't ask me what the crown should look I, like. They didn't ask me either, but congratulations to our homecoming king and queen here tonight at Daphne. Let's see. We see more of uh, Nick Clark in the second half. Hopefully, he took a little break there in the second period after his touchdown run. And our so Morgan Bias, congratulations, and also to Nick 
Clark, and that gets us to our Scholastic Athlete yeah. of the Week, Dan We've Brennan. seen Price Beal before, Spanish Ford High School, GPA 449, ACT 35. That's almost as good as you can get. Cross country, distance track, honors uh, include the chess club, engineering club, FCA, plans to study electrical or mechanical engineering. Which were yeah, that's our what, old majors. That's what we did. <laughs> All those skyscrapers that you worked on <laughs> before you got into broadcasting. <laughs> So congratulations to Bryce yeah. Thanks to Andy Citrin. Going to yes. give one of our Scholastic Athletes $5,000. Might be Price or? Could be Lucy McCoy. Yeah. Daphne High School, GPA 4.0. She's the co-captain of the volleyball team. I think I saw her picture down on the field there. One of those banners hanging along the stands. Uh, she's the DHS stu in student government. NHS created Breaking the Stigma. Active member of Coastal Church. Plans to major in criminology. For forensics, lock them up. Yeah, we were not so much on that. We were more of the forensics and the criminology <laughs> majors for a while. Uh, they were they were they, stu they were studying us. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a case study. So again, thanks to Andy Citron, Scholastic Athletes. Thanks and uh, Morgan Baez, and she was. So they did. They, it was it was a surprise. They don't announce it until here at halftime. Yep. Uh, and you heard the crowd erupt, and Morgan lost her lost her crown, but they quickly got it. Got it back, and her and Nick Clark, congratulations. Uh, what a, just a, something she'll remember her whole life. She was homecoming queen here at Daphne High School. Yeah. So. Great, big, big, great celebration tonight of all things Daphne High School. The team's, team's playing along with the script with a three-touchdown lead at the break here. Yep. Jamar Malone. We saw the passing here. It's not gaudy at all. He's just been efficient, but he really hasn't hasn't taken any shots downfield. No. He's just been saying, hey, just uh, rinse and repeat. Take what the defense gives you. And, yeah. But I bet there, I bet we see a shot somewhere in the second half, right? I, it would, would surprise me, but when they had the double pass is when I thought they were going to do it. They yep, after got, the turnover. Got the turnover around the 45-yard line. It was a double pass instead. Uh, but uh, he's got some steady receivers who catch the ball well. But we're going to see if he doesn't take a chance here in the second half. Try to get a big chunk play. Got folks checking in, watching the game. Kathy Lyles watching it here in Daphne. Angela Kennedy checking in, watching this one down in Orange Beach tonight. Pat Ivy in Orange Beach also getting updates on the game. I question his commitment to watching if he's not watching this evening. And, of course, Chris Haley in point clear watching the game tonight as he always Always does. Kenny Just Keaton reminded me uh, uh, down on the field at halftime. They were up 15 nothing in this game last year. We did that game yep. at Spanish Fort, and they lost that game. Correct. And he that was top of mind, top of mind awareness for Coach King, and I bet it was discussed in that field house. No doubt. Lytle will kick off. Miles. Miles, if you're a Tommy Boy fan, back deep. Lytle kicks this one out of bounds. And Kenny King will have to decide, does he want it at the 35? I think he'll just take it there. And Ron Coleman looking over to see what Daphne wants to do, and that is indeed what to do. They'll take it out. The 35. Spanish Ford's defense, they could they could really use to take one away here. Yeah, you know, when they were kicking off there, and I realized that Daphne was going to get it first here in the second half. At least they got the halftime break, but uh, well, there's a lot of what Daphne intended to do in the first half that they just did. They took advantage of the turnover, so they didn't always have long fields. Yep. But they moved the ball constantly. Here's the trigger guy right here. Yep. And the homecoming king next to him. Malone pulls it away from him. Pressure from the backside. And he's hit. He's going to be dropped for a loss. Good pressure that time from the Toros. They brought Caleb the pressure. Thomas, yeah. yeah, they brought the Walton. Walton came. comes up from his safety position, Jim. Yep. He got him low, and then Caleb Thomas got him high. First sack of the season for Thomas. And official timeout.
Kenny King get? We got an injured player Offensive down. Time on the field. Being stretched just just near the sideline. Looks like cramps. But he's right so close to the boundary that they don't want to have a play. A happen that could come to the near side and mm -hmm. then he would be in a very precarious position down there. So the Trojans will come over to confer as stretching continues. Daphne, as we said, open next week. Not sure I'd want Kenny King bending my leg at you know like if he wanted to put a little extra heat on <laughs> on there. This will help leg, it. My leg anyway. Uh, maybe not one of these young men that are super strong. That was McLaren. You can see why he's cramping up the night. He's yeah. He's been having he's tonight. Been, he's been everywhere. Yeah. And that, Kenny King's got to be, that's a submission holder. You're you're tapping out quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tapping out quickly anyway. I can't speak for everyone else. All right, second and 11 for Malone and the Trojans. Clark drops the shoulder, and he'll get a couple. At times, this Spanish forward defense looks kind of stingy, you yep. know? Burkhalter on the stop. Freeman was there. Burkhalter came in late in third and seven. Trojans overload. Make it the Toros overload in the bottom of the screen, looking to bring a little pressure. This is Burkhalter all the way up. They flip, flip, flip it around, yeah. Flip McConaughey, McConaughey on the other side, and he ends up making the tackle on the run. Clark, yep. McConaughey grabbed a hold of Clark up high and gets up to about the 49. It's going to be fourth and one. Clark on the carry. Up by 20 here. At about six. Midfield. He, now you're gonna punt it. Yep. Just, don't, just, just pin him back and let your defense keep playing, keep playing solid. He's had a good game tonight, McConaughey. Yep, really has. Sampson on to punt. And Nemo Hickson will stand around the 20. A late reset of the play clock here. Sampson at the 30. The freshman. Pressure coming, nearly blocked. And Nemo Hickson Fair catches it at the 28. Boy, the heat was coming from the far edge. Fair catch at the 25-yard line. Sampson did a good job to get that one off. So good, good start for the Toros defensively. Got the, got the stop. Got the stop. It was a late touchdown for Spanish Fort that created this wide lead of 20 points now. Let's see if Spanish Fort can answer back. Yeah, down by. 20 here, and Schamberger. The sophomore who's run the ball well this evening now looks to zip it out to the far side, and Nemo Hickson slips a block, and he'll get about seven. He's 11 and 14 on the night, Jim. Schamberger's pass yep. is complete to Hickson. Woodard with the stop nine, there. 90 Woodard yards or so, so he's not had a bad night. Yeah, only the one down. bad decision on that opening drive, and it, yep. not sure, it was a miscommunication between he and his receiver. Not sure what happened there, but they'll give him seven here on first down. Nixon's the one guy who, who also can, can break a big one for you if you're the, if you're the Toros. Yeah. Sawyer Wilson on the right side, and he's got a first down, and Wilson up near midfield, still on his feet, and Wilson all the way up to the 40-yard line. Pick up a 26, give him that's, 25 officially to the 41. That's his play. Yeah. Huh? Johnson on the stop. A little huh? counter, and, and first and 10, Spanish board. He, he, he's pretty good in all that traffic. and Justin Bonner, good downfield block. And yes. There for the Toros as they move it to the 41. They are still playing hard. Four minutes gone by 
in the third here on homecoming night in Daphne. Schamberger keeps it, trying to bounce to the outside, and he'll get pulled down there. Jaden Lee, number eight, in to make the stop. Schamberger on the carry. Gain of two. And Fourth it's just a couple, but that one was kind of blown up quickly by the Trojan interior. Yeah, that play was not designed to go that way. He just was trying to find some space anywhere. Trojan, again, defensively put a lot of pressure on you and, and just pressure you to try and make bad decisions. That front three is big and powerful. Wilson stays in the backfield with Schamberger. This one padded up in the air. Schamberger pulls it down. That one was bounced straight up in the air, and Schamberger he might have been better if he just batted that one down because they end up losing Schamberger's a few. Deflected and caught. Loss of two on the play. Yeah, Schamberger trying to make a play. Brings up third down. Maddox Ballius got his arms up to make the stop on that one. Good hustle play by him. Third and 12. So, yeah, they lose. All the way back to third and long. Schamberger steps him in the pocket, fires over the middle. He's able to get that one complete to Bonner, and Bonner's going to streak it in for the score. His first touchdown of the season, their leading receiver, and the Toros on third and long convert from 43. Touchdown, Spanish Fort. And they cut into the Trojan lead. He threw it, and I was like, no, 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 because it was right in triple coverage pretty much in the zone. <laughs> Look at that. I mean, there are Daphne players everywhere there. But there's, also, there's also Bonner, and he made the catch. Yep, the sophomore, and he had to get it over, over Lambert, who was coming into the pressure. Amon S. Calvert, touchdown. Amon S. Calvert, innovations in steel. Innovations strengthened by people, and now hiring at Amon S. Calvert Jobs.com. So third and 12. Schamberger over the middle and Bonner, the sophomore, 15th catch of the season. First touchdown, and it's 27 14, about halfway through the third. So, Spanish Fort, they get the stop defensively. Yep. Get the touchdown. Then now I've cut it to a two score game here and defense gonna have to they just can't give up much more here tonight and hope to win this game you gotta keep I, I agree with that and keep in mind too they got the ball back when Daphne kicked it at midfield with fourth and one yep you're right and Lytle drilled the last one out of bounds on our US Army kickoff This one he hits a little more squarely, but it's going to hang up and drifting back into the end zone. Little's kick results in a touchback. It was green just drifted back in, in there. And ten, Daphne. Once you go back into the end zone, you can't bring it back out at the high school level. Yeah, like we said, we haven't, I haven't really seen any shots down downfield. Had the double pass that was one, but we haven't seen Malone take one there. He just you got to think at some point they're, they're going to take a deep look. You know, I think that's what was so breathtaking for us. The first game we saw him, he threw those balls, and they were yep. really <laughs> good-looking footballs that ended up with uh, big gains. Let's see what happens. Malone comes to the near side, and Donnelly is wrapped up and driven down by Markel Kyer, who Dan talked about in the pregame show. And Sometimes those lockdown corners don't like to tackle. Markel, he likes to make the stick, too. He does. They're also playing off the ball a little bit, so they're, they're kind of giving them, if you will, you know, the, the quick five or eight yards. The car comes up and makes the stop, for sure. McConathy is very happy with that. They get four on first down. Now quick over the middle. That one tipped in the air, then knocked loose. There's a pressure coming again and I think it was the big lengthy arms of McConathy Let's see if he was able to knock that one up in the air before Paul could get to scoot miles he's having a game McConathy 
Now it brings up third and six. Pretty jazzed up over on the, yep, the Toro crowd. Yep. Trying to cheer on their defense as Malone takes the snap, looking right side, fires this one behind his intended receiver, Kobe Donnelly, and a three and out. And Spanish Fort. Going to get it back the here, and that was a quick three and out. You don't keep momentum automatically, do you? No. <laughs> You've got to use it when you have it. And it's a real thing. Like it, it, is. it was real. You could feel it up here. That yeah. was a big stop for Spanish Fort. There's Williamson. And a oh, flag thrown here. So hold on here. So it was... It's fourth and about six. Daphne, too many men on the field, maybe? Yeah, I think they had 12. I think Daphne had 12 on the field. They still have 12 on the... Oh, now they wave it off. Okay, maybe I just can't count, which would not be the first time that has been... That accusation has been leveled <laughs> against me. All right, Spanish Fort off. takes a timeout. timeout. 6-14, we'll have the point coming up right after this. All right, so out of the timeout, the freshman Samson now. Punt goes off the hands of the up man. It's still loose and recovered by the Toros inside the 10. There's your gift. There is your gift. Aaron Riley gets on it. Were they going to try to fake it? I, I don't it, understand. Because it went off the hands of the up man. Spanish Fort took a timeout. I wonder if they had snipped they something out. The yeah. But it, let's, let's watch. It goes off the hands. Oh, yeah. They oh, were. Yeah. It was. It, yep. It was coming right to right to Graham. So they go super aggressive deep in your yep. own end. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, it was fourth and. It was fourth and six. Oh, six. Okay. Well, now it's first and goal from the seventh. And, and, unless, and one thing I think, was it a low snap and maybe Graham just instinctively put his hands up? That's oh, the only thing I can think. He was there. I mean, he was, he, it was coming to him. So they go with Williamson, the big full back. Oh, big right. Now the ball pops loose, still loose, rolling, recovered, still now recovered. Yet, and the Toros can't get out of it. It goes out of bounds. But out of bounds, but not in the end zone, I don't believe. Out of bounds at nope, the one. They're saying touchback. They're saying touchback. Daphne's going to get it. There's a on the plate. Oh, no one they from Spanish Fork could get on it, and it got pushed out of the end zone I, I on guess the side. Maybe because it was in the end zone and then ended up out of bounds, but once it crossed that line. So back-to-back -back turnovers. The ball gets knocked. Looked like Williamson was going to go in, gets knocked out of his hands. Gardner has a chance to get on it. He can't hold on to it. Now watch as trying to roll on it was Blake Smith. He couldn't grab it, and it goes out of bounds through the ends. Let's watch where it goes out here, Dan. Comes back. Oh, look at that. Hit the pylon. Hit the pylon. That's a so, touchback. Yeah, I don't know if it once it got into the end zone anyway, if you could have put it at it the one. Don't know. But once it goes. I, I, you just, you oh, pet, that's a rare play. Wow. So... It's a get back in the present here. It goes as a turnover and big run up to the 30 by Nick Clark. Oh, so once, yeah, once it goes out of Clark bounds in the, the end carry. zone, it's a touchback and the defense gets the ball. Oh, that. And the yard is just good enough for a Boy. What a that's crazy! What a turn of events! And not one, but two Spanish four players with a chance to get yeah. that ball for but a touchdown. So Newton Gardner, the defensive end, the first one to try to fall on it. Then the big lineman tried as well, and it was only because Williamson was fighting for extra yards when he got down to about the two. Clark up to the thirty-five. You know, you've got Nick Clark, and that's on the carry. That's a pretty good guy to have in a situation like this. Yep. Calm everybody down. Yep. Easy, easy. A couple of runs to Nick Clark. You've got a first down and then a, a, another very good gain on first down. So the third turnover tonight for 
the Toros. Clark met in the backfield by McConathy, and he stopped for a loss of three. McConathy does it all. Think of him as a pass rusher, but run game two, he's been great Over tonight. On the carry, stop behind Just the line of scrimmage. Fought through and pulled Clark down there. It'll be third and eight now for the Trojans. This is their third possession of the third quarter. <laughs> yeah. Two punts, well, one punt, a punt attempt. And now third and eight here. Malone, pressure. And they're going to get him, drop him all the way back inside the 25. McConathy, the leader in sacks in 6A in the state of Alabama, adds another to his total. Yeah, he wasn't uh, celebrating with the away fans. He was letting the home fans know, I got him again. Good player. Goodness. Having a really good game. Gardner in there helping out as well. So tell me if you've heard this again. Samson, the freshman, will set up at the 10 to punt Dan Brennan. Yeah, uh, and you were talking about that edge that this game seems to have from time to time, like all the time. It's there. Left-footed kicker, good end over end kick. Hickson had trouble with it, fighting for it at the bottom of the pile, and he will come away with it. That was a good kick that chased Hickson all the way back. Hit him up high on the shoulder pads. And it was nearly the fourth turnover of the night. You, you pointed at it with end over end, right? Yep. He falls on it. Spanish Ford gets it back. The Mobile County Sheriff's Office provides a challenging and interesting job opportunity. Join Team Sheriff today at teamsheriff.org. Congratulations. Also, tonight's game is brought to you by IBEW. It's the largest electrical union in the world, representing workers' rights in all areas of the electrical and telecommunications industries. Thank you for your sponsorship of Friday Night Rivals. Three minutes, 17 seconds left here in the third. So Spanish sports defense has forced three punts here in the third. And now they got good field position starting up at the 40. Sawyer Wilson on the left side. Get maybe one. Wilson on the carry. There. Yeah, you just think about when you always see a big play. Coach Gang always said big play. Games come down to a handful of four or five yeah. big plays. And we, boy, we just saw a few of them. We sure did. Back to back plays down there. Fake punt that went awry and then. On first and goal, Daphne fumbles it out of the uh, Spanish word, fumbles it out of the end zone. They, but then they had it at the six. They fumbled it at the one. Yep. Second and nine. Schamberger quickly out to the near side. Gets it off to Gabe Myers. And he makes a nice move, and he's into Trojan territory. And he's got a Toro first down. You know, again, the, you know, Schamberger sees what we all see. The corners are playing off. You're going to be able to get that quick pass if you get it off and get it, you know, get it out there quickly. And Schamberger's got a good arm. One thing we saw... That halftime then was also the time of possession. Daphne's defense have been out there for 15 of the 24 minutes in the first half. Yeah. So just wonder the longer this game goes, does that defense start to feel a little more tired from being on the field a lot? Well, yeah, three three uh, punts so far for their offense in the second half. So long, Spanish Ford really playing well. Long pass out to Nemo Hickson, and he breaks a tackle, and he's got another first down to the 35. Boy, that pass took a long time to get out there. That one, was a, it was a long pass. And Hickson, however, able to split the double team and... Toro is on the move again up to the 35. Boy, Bonner's done a good job blocking tonight as well, and he's got the touchdown reception for the Toros also. So we're inside two minutes to go here in the third. Jim Cox, Dan Brennan, our great Friday Night Rivals crew here at Jubilee Stadium. Schamberger gives it off. Sawyer Wilson bangs ahead. And Pete brings him down. He's up to the 31, so a nice gain of five on first down. Wilson on the carry. You know, you don't see a lot of players taking a play off in this game. Mm -mm. Gain of four on the play brings up second and six. Yeah, a lot of these kids have known each other since they were, you know, started out in, in uh, oh, yeah. elementary school. Absolutely. 
Second and five. Schamberger. Pressure coming, fires it over, they'll tip it over Nemo. Oh, Nemo Wilson's hands. Almost a chance for an INT. Keandre Johnson, the sophomore there. Is that one just a little behind? Yeah, Hickson on the slant, and he's, he's open for yep. sure. Kind of maybe just a little high. Yeah, a little high. But Hickson's not the tallest guy. Yeah, if he holds on to it, he might be streaking to that yep. opposite corner. Third and five. Two down territory here for the for the Toros. Schamberger, far side, and that one off the hands. And Hickson again. Schamberger, yeah. maybe not as accurate here in the second half as he was in the first half. Jim, I think he's feeling the pressure, and and uh, he maybe even feeling the pressure before it's there. Up a big fourth down. Fourth and six, and Chase Smith doesn't look like he's feeling the pressure. He never does. Play clock down to five here. Schamberger gets him set. Play clock at three. They're not going to get it off. They have to take a timeout. They're second mm. here in the third quarter. You know, you got a quarterback who's a sophomore, not as aware as he should be right there. And they're going to. Timeout's going to save the day, at least for the moment. Fourth down and six or so for Spanish Ford, who have done a good job here in the second half. Yeah, they've held Daphne scoreless. You know, they, had, they took that last timeout before the punt, which was. You, you kind of thought it was a bit I mean, uh, There was a flag that was waved off, and they took a timeout. And, and now you look back at it, you're wondering if, if Spanish Fort was thinking, hey, something doesn't look right here. They may, maybe they're going to try something. So they took the timeout. And, and a whole lot of things didn't end up looking right on that, on that punt. No. And then so apparently that was a fake punt anyway. They decided to go with it. They fumble it. Spanish Fort gets it around the sixth, bringing Williamson to, you know, kind of in his bruising style, get it home. It looked like he was going to get there. It looked like he was going to get there. He banged off a lot of people over guard, and next thing you know, he's about the one. He loses possession of the ball and ends up going out of bounds. Back to Daphne, but they can do a little yeah, with it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, fourth and six. Fourth and six for the, the Toros inside a minute to go here in the third. Schamberger looking right side, fires it off, able to get it complete at the sticks. Nemo Hickson slips a tackle, and Hickson's in for the touchdown, Toros. Fourth and six, they convert. Hickson with his second touchdown of the season, and we've got a game here in the Battle of I-10, Dan Don't Brennan. Don't we, though? The Spanish Four team. They weren't uh, bemoaning the situation, staring at the scoreboard when they came out for the second half. They came, they came out to play. Amon S. Calvert touchdown innovations and steel strengthened by people. Now hiring Amon S. Calvert jobs.com. What a job by Nemo Hickson there with a move inside the five. Schamberger, a couple of passes off the mark. The sophomore steadies himself on fourth down. Don't forget he had a third and 12 that he threw for the touchdown in the third quarter. And it is 27 to 21. And I don't want to say that that two-point conversion they went for late in the second quarter that failed that one point isn't looming rather large right now Dan Brady. Yeah, it's looming as large as a point can loom, especially with all this momentum that uh, Spanish Ford has and we really haven't seen any evidence of the Daphne offense here in the second half. No, three punts and the Spanish Ford student body Excited they're all in the neon colors and brought to you by the United States Coast Guard, our school colors cam. There's a lot of colors on the palette there to choose from. Some chartreuse, lots of pinks, little, little magenta in there as well. You're in the box of 64. <laughs> so thanks to the Coast Guard and now Lytle will try to boom this one into the end zone. All the homecoming momentum is on the side of the visitors over there. Again, this series all time, nine to two in favor of Spanish Ford. 
Now U.S. Army kickoff. And Lytle puts it into the end zone. Let's take a look at that touchdown again here. Nemo Hicks and they tried for a couple of times to him on this drive and went off his hands, but Schamberger stepped up and then Hicks and, like you said, not tall, but nice reception and a move at the five and he's in for the score and it is 27 21 with 14 unanswered here by spanish fort in the third not just a touchdown jim a touchdown on fourth down yep chamburger as i said but you know a couple of passes off the mark there on that drive but then you said was feeling the pressure from the pressure coming on him converts there yeah he straightened himself out made a big throw Pressure again by this Toro defense as Nick Clark was shut down by Gray Freeman. Drew Williamson Clark in the there carry. as well. He loses one. I Ball think if I'm if I'm Daphne, I don't even snap it again here. You don't you, you can let the clock run down. There's a second between the play clock and the game clock. I would just let this run down, I think, here and talk it over. Yeah, walk walk down to the other end of the field to start the fourth. But Malone will take it. Pressure coming. McConathy. Malone slips away from him. McConathy trying to chase after him again. But now Malone looking to turn the corner. And he's going to be wrestled down. Got away from the first sack. But Josh Powell, the corner, able to grab him. He ends up getting a couple. But that'll close out the third. And third and long coming up. But this one's been all Spanish sport. Moner with a touchdown on third and 12, and Nemo Hickson on fourth and six. And it's 27 21 here in the Battle of I 10 on Friday Night Rivals. Friday Night Rivals brought to you in part by Greer's, proud longtime sponsor of our starting lineup serving the community for 107 years. Also brought to you by the U.S. Army. Be all you can be and find your path at GoArmy.com. Also tonight, thank you very much to the U.S. Coast Guard. Proud sponsor for the presentation of the colors at the beginning of the game. To learn more about career opportunities with the U.S. Coast Guard, contact a recruiter today or visit GoCoastGuard.com. You know, last night on the NFL game, Dan, where the Detroit Lions went and turned Lambeau into the biggest cat box in the world. Now Michael said that Keith Jackson used to call that a possum hunting moon. <laughs> said the harvest moon was a possum hunting moon, and we got it here tonight in Daphne as well. Right. Fourth down to start the fourth. McConaughey came in with pressure, and so did Drew Pannoni, and Pannoni got his hand on that one, knocked the pass down, and it's going to be the fourth straight punt situation coming up for the Daphne Trojans. I don't know if they've gotten a first down here in the second half. Now Pannoni came off the right edge and knocked Malone's pass down, and Sampson will stand inside the 10, and Hickson back at the 45. Pannoni, the senior, swinging a big arm there to knock that one down. And now Daphne takes a timeout, four seconds into the fourth. So, yeah, this, this Daphne offense has just been shut down at in the second half this oh. is four four possessions four punts you know you had your running back out there as the king during homecoming yeah you just had the feeling like this one's almost in bed now it's 27 seven, seven at the yeah. half yeah and now spanish fort should get good field position on the last kick that samson got off was that end over in and hickson had a little trouble handling it and he was able to fall back on it and one way or the other if they're able to field it. Great field position again for mm -hmm. a Spanish Fort team that now finds themselves down no longer 20, but only six points. Yeah, and you got to think that the confidence of Schamberger has just continued to grow here in and, the second half. And you're about to give him a short field. Yep. So Samson on for the punt. He'll stand at the eight, he's a left-footed kicker.
Good snap and goes, kicks it straight up in the air. It goes straight up in the air and goes out of bounds at about the 32-yard line, I think. Let's see where they're going to mark it. 31, a nine-yard punt. Yep. Nine, that one went straight in the air and a nine-yard punt. Gives Spanish fourth the ball at the Trojan 31. They're knocking on the Dr. Pepper maroon zone. Just watch. Side wow. of his foot. Wasn't a lot of pressure coming his way. And I'm sure there was Vic Lockett used to say they were yelling, Peter, 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 get away from that ball. Well, look now. I knew it was going to be midfielder closer, but 31-yard line. High snap, Schamberger does a good job to corral it, and he'll get thrown down back at the line of scrimmage. As that one was up in the Schamberger air, and the Andre Houston was there, and that was almost the a almost the fourth turnover of the night. Yeah, it, no gain on the play. I think that you know Daphne's going to bring some numbers now, Jim. They're not going to sit back anymore. Uh, they're going to force the action with bringing some linebackers like Houston, bringing people off the edge. Zip out to the far side, going down low to grab it. Gabe Myers, and Myers but looked like he did a good job not to put his knee down when he caught that one. This is going to get down to the 27, going to bring up third and about six. So Well-trained, uh, good-looking athlete right there. Yep. And Boy, he's, he's hurting. Mm. I wonder if he, if he fell on the ball, maybe knocked the wind out of him, maybe uh, just to maybe at the end of that play. Yeah. So again, two down territory here, third and six coming up for the Toros. They can take their last timeout. Let's see. They so that'll be the last timeout, timeout Spanish for Fort. Spanish Fort. And they'll have. Third down coming up here from the 27. Where you talk about two down territory, here it is. I don't, I don't know that their kicker can. They've always got pretty good kickers at Spanish Ford. I don't know that they have a guy they want to rely on for this, especially the situation down only six. Momentum, and you know, just seven, you're going to. undefeated Lady yeah. Trojan flag football team will take on McGill at home Tuesday, October the 3rd at 5.30 and 6.30. Give us a chance to tell you about more of our great partners here on yeah. Friday Night Rivals during this time out. Hey, they've got a, got a sick roof. I'm going to call the doctor. Roof Doctor is a proud supporter of the uh, student athletes on Friday Night Rivals. Thank you to Roof Doctors. Also, good to see our friends from Fast Signs. They dropped by FM Talk 106.5 the other day. Big sponsors here on Friday Night Football as well. Transforming your place begins uh, at our place they say at fast signs let fast signs help you make your statement also herc reynolds providing our eye in the sky there in the end is. zone right there there she blows <laughs> herc reynolds a proud and long time supporter of friday night rivals and known for their foghorn as well apparently as yeah. well all right third and six Schamberger with pressure, fires it out, able to get it to the tight end. Chandler, uh, Chandler Wilson breaks a tackle, and he's got a Toro first down inside the 17, down about the 16. He's into the Dr. Pepper maroon zone, but there is a flag back at the 35. Mm. Well, you heard the moaning on this sideline. Notice again, Jim, the pressure coming from Daphne. They're going to make him. Flag on the play. They're, they're going to try to force Schamberger into. Mm, holding. Yeah, mm. when you hold when they're blitzing. Holding against the Toro. Boy, good play by oh, the big tight end, too. And good play by Schamberger. And yeah, to get it off. He's going to convert the first down. Let's watch here. Pressure's coming. Yeah, oh, it's just a tackle. Yeah, that was a, yep. that's a good call. Good slip tackle right there. Mm. So this makes this two-down territory. After the penalty. Rupper now is it's third and 16. Chandler Wilson, good looking, big athlete. So out of timeouts here. They're going to have to hurry to get the play clock in because they're down. It's under 10 now. Now it's at five. Schamberger able to get it off. More pressure coming. Schamberger 
Rolls to his right, looking downfield, sets, fires. He's got it complete. Yeah. Converts on third and 16. Big play by Schamberger on the run. Very accurate throw. Look at that. Nemo Hickson yep. stays in bounds. Good, boy. Good work with the down. feet. Good work by Jared Kihas on the camera there. Yep. Inside the 20 down to the 17. So on third and 16, they convert. And Spanish Fort knocking on the door with 14 straight unanswered here in the second half. Sawyer Wilson lost his footing as he went to cut it back mm. to the inside and had well, to cut it back there. because he had nothing but purple and black jerseys in front of him. Yeah. Of He'd have got something out of that. Loses his feet. Got more. What a comeback by the Toros. Just a really a dominant third quarter yeah, here into the for, fourth. For sure. Kenny King warned me at halftime. They did it to us last and year. Kenny King wants to take a timeout here. So they will only have one left. Kenny King was racing down the sideline to get that timeout. It's a tight one here tonight. It's homecoming for Daphne, but Spanish Ford rallying back here in the second half. Just two minutes, 15 seconds into the fourth quarter. Jim Cox, Dan Brennan here in Daphne. Toros looking, fires complete. Able to get it inside the 10, slips a tackle, still on his feet, lunges to the end zone. Touchdown, Toros. Bonner. Second one of the night for the sophomore. And Spanish Ford is a PAT away from taking their first lead of the night. AMS Calvert touchdown to AMS Calvert Innovations in Steel, strengthened by people now hiring AMS Calvertjobs.com. What a throw by Schamberger. Yeah, on the slant again. Watch this move. Uh uh. Now I'll go. Oh. Good athletic play to shake and bake the DBs. And Lytle with the ever important PAT, and it's 21 straight Spanish Fort. And the Toros have sucked the life out of Jubilee Stadium here since the halftime homecoming coronation. 27 to 7 at the half. Big party was underway here. It just felt that way, right? Yep. Spanish Ford said, you know what? It's going to be our party in the second half. And they Another look. all on the field. Another Watch look. this move here. Two touchdowns tonight for Bonner. What Schamberger's play here? Gotta like it, Dan Brennan. I like it. So now Daphne went for two on their fourth touchdown of the first half and got turned away. And that's the difference in this one so far. But we have a lot of football left here at nine and a half minutes. But consider the rivalry. And, and consider also, the players on the field. And it's a it's the rivalry's been all tilted towards Spanish Fort. Nine, nine and two out of the 11 games and Schamberger 19 to 24 three touch about that nice night and we're 227 yards too. Bonner real good night too. It's his second touchdown this evening. Lytle with another touchback here tonight and Daphne's had it four times here in the second half already. It's been four punts. Yeah, 27 in the first half. Basic, we saw, saw it aside from any turn, turnovers, but they couldn't be stopped in the first half. Now, now, the opposite is true here in the entire third quarter, the beginning of the fourth quarter. They can't get a first down. Now, yeah. that could all change because of that guy for one. Nick Clark, 45. What do they do to get out of the ditch? That's the question. Spanish Ford playing tough. Malone sends, well, well, he sent Clark in motion, and then everyone on the offensive line except the center move. Back him up. Five plays, 31 Stop yards, 210 after the 11 yard punt. And the Toros. 
with the Mobile County Sheriff's Office scoring drive. Have taken the lead in this one, 28-27. And first and 15 after the penalty against the Toros. And now on some QB power, McConathy comes in and shuts down Malone on first down. Also, Berka, Ber uh, Bishop Burkhalter on the carry. in there as well. No gain on the play. And he was stopped right at the line of scrimmage as Burkhalter. Just a junior. He's played well here tonight as well. Oh, yeah. It's second and 15. and They've, they've got no answer for McConaughey. No, the, ju the, big, the big junior QB needs to make a play here for his Trojans. Clark motions out. Malone looks tipped up in the air again and knocked down. Pressure coming, and that's the third pass. I think Malone has had knocked down here tonight. Williamson was coming. When's the last time he's had a clean pocket too, Jim? Yeah. See, yeah, that was Williamson. Again, he's replacing Sterling Dixon at that linebacker spot. Doing a pretty good job. And now you're third and 15. You gotta be you're careful. At your own 15. Gotta be careful. Yeah, this is that three balls knocked up in the air at the line of scrimmage. And third and 15 for Malone and Clark and crew. Malone looks, wants to go near sideline, and it's incomplete. Over the hands of his intended receiver, and that'll be another three and out, and another punt forthcoming from the Trojans. There's almost some patterns you can't call because the pressure's been so immediate here in the second half. And now they're going to make a change, and Nathan Varela will come in and punt. Again, the pressure coming. That was Freeman coming that time. So he was trying to get it off to R.J. Daly, who had the first touchdown of the night. And yep. Varela was hitting some big, booming punts while Dan and I were down on the field before the game, but still Hickson is standing at, at midfield. Varela again, another bad Daphne punt. That one goes out of bounds at about the 28. That's going to be a 12-yard punt, topping the last one by a yard. Mm. They mark it at the 29, a 14-yard punt officially. So a 14 and 11-yard punt here in the second half. And Spanish Fort. Remarkably has it at the 29 again. Yeah, uh, they got it at the, what, 31 last time. And Coach Chase Smith really doesn't change it, his expression much on the sideline. But he's got to be feeling different things from the first half to now. And a hard count by Schamberger. And Dafty jumps offside. The Trojans are rattled, Dan. Brother. Oh, yeah. They're rattled. Their defense is tired. Been out there all night. Yep. Offside against the Trojans. They were out there all night in the first half yeah. when they had a 20-point lead. Yeah, they were. Spanish Ford had the ball 15 minutes and 11 seconds in the first half and yet trailed 27-7. to seven. You yep. wouldn't think that would be the case. 15-yard penalties, yep. turnovers, Short. all accounted for that. So first and five, Schamberger going to keep it himself. And this one is blown up. Pressure coming from the outside to leave Graham, and he has got his eighth sack of the season. And they get back the five yards on the penalties and more as he loses six and second and 11 coming yeah. up. Defensive end Graham crashes in. Yeah, I don't think that Spanish Ford wants to make things any easier for Schamberger back there. He's been too effective here in the second half. Second and 11. Four minutes gone by here in the fourth. Schamberger out to Hickson. He's got a blocker from Bonner in front. And Hickson on his feet down to the 14. And he's going to have... A Spanish fort first down in the Dr. Pepper Maroon zone. Was that Bonner on the block? Bonner on the block, he, it was. He, he, watch what he does. He, he gets leverage and pushes the defensive back to the outside. And then Hickson is so shifty. Yep. And you, know, it's, you, you see it so many times. Those receivers out there, they'll hold. You, they, they get two, and Bonner just, just shoved him back. Yep. Got the leverage, as you said. And it's first and 10 at the 13. 
for the Toros. Schamberger calls for Hickson to go in motion and hands it to him. Hickson to the outside, now looking for the corner, and Hickson gonna dive down, and he's gonna be close to another Toro first down. Boy, the speed got turned on there when he got to the corner. This, this side there. of the field, this uh, Daphne homecoming crowd is mystified by what they've seen here in the second half. Second and two. Just domination by Spanish Fort. And where did it come from? Picks up eight. It's really begun with their defense, right? Oh. Four punts in the second half is all Daphne has done. Meanwhile, Spanish Fort has scored 21 unanswered. Then they got second and two. And looks like they're going to get backed up here. Delay a game. I don't think they got that one. That one off. Ooh, that just, boy, second and two mm. from the five. Man. We'll get a big. Nope, just a false start, but same, same net result. They'll back him up five. So second and seven now here for the Toros. Fact is, they've done pretty much what they wanted to do. It's a tired Daphne defense. Yep. And, and they're, they're exploiting it. And their offense did them no favors with those four possessions and four quick punts. Yeah. I don't know if they were all three and outs, but close. I think, I think maybe three of them were. Yeah. Sawyer Wilson back with Schamberger. He gives it to him. He's on the left side. Wilson is in out of the flag at the end. He's in for the score. Wilson on the carry. I mean, that left side of that line just collapsed the Daphne defensive line. See what this flag is right at the. It was thrown right as he was pushing toward the end zone. There's been no shortage of these tonight. And My heavens, no. And it looks like it's going to go against Daphne. Maybe a personal foul at the end of the play. Touchdown, Toros. After the play, he says. On sportsman like. On Daphne, on Daphne yeah. yeah. So they'll take the penalty probably on the kickoff. Amon S. Calvert touchdown. Take a look here. Look at the line. Look at just blowing them up, getting their seals. Oh. Wow. Uh, so I mean, a, a, the big block there by Chandler Wilson knocked that, the helmet off. Was that Wilson who did yeah. that? I mean, that's the kind of aggression that Spanish Ford is playing with here in the second half. It's real. Okay, so now do you do, do, Take the penalty to try to go for two. So it's 34 27 as we await the PAT. And they keep Drew Williamson in at quarterback. They go for two. And now Chase Smith is out on the field. The play clock continues to roll down. They do not have any timeouts. The ball did not get moved after the penalty. So, okay, the, we'll reset the play clock now. We've had a lot of flags. We've had a lot of conferences here. Yeah, a lot of filibusters. Yeah. And, and it's like, it's been a really amazing game, but a tale of two halves, to be sure. So you're up by seven. You're trying to make it a nine-point game here to push it to two scores. And now the officials will have another conversation. Now they're going to pull out one of the Daphne... Players look like maybe an equipment problem with his helmet. Well, yeah, it's, that might have been the one who lost the helmet. Yeah, could could have been. Yeah, he yeah he lost his helmet. Uh, so he's got to get out of the game. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. All right, and now guess what? We got another flag 
And the Trojans are saying this one, uh, the, the Taurus are saying this one's on the Trojans, and it doesn't look like there's much resistance or argument going on. So now they'll move. Boy, they, everything's taking a yeah. bipartisan act from the Hill. I mean, good. Come on now. So it'll be half the distance if it's against, because if it's against Spanish Fort, now you would line up and, well, now we got to, hold on. Now we got a, we got someone from, all right, we got a Daphne player down here. That's got to be on Daphne. Otherwise, if it was on Spanish Fort, you'd send the kicking team out. If you, you're going to get backed up from here, I think you would just kick it at that yeah, point. Yeah. But now we got a Daphne player. Is he cramped? Da so if you're just joining us, mm. it is 27 in a row scored by Spanish Ford. It was 27 7 at a halftime. So let's, it was 27 7, and then here come the Toros back. Schamberger able to get it off to Justin Bonner. That was on a third and 12. Mm -hmm. And then Schamberger to Nemo Hickson on fourth and six. Now it's 27 21 after the PAT. Correct. And then Schamberger able to get this one off to Bonner, who makes the nice Chris Berman whoop move. <laughs> he did. And the PAT. Now and, they're up one. And, and, and then on this drive, Sawyer Wilson. Watch the the pile in there. He doesn't have any contact to the goal line. Yeah. And so we still have the Toro player down. And Daphne's had the ball four times in the second half. They've punted it four times. They got the ball first to start the second half. They scored late with just 40 seconds left in the second quarter to make it 27-7. They went for the trick two-point play. Got stopped at the one yard line. And Daphne got it back. Uh, Spanish Ford got it back. They just ran one play, and Chase Smith said, All right, let's, I just want to want to regroup here at the half. But his defense came out and made a great stop. And then, don't forget, oh, yeah, then they had a fake punt that went a ride deep, deep in their own end, inside their own 10 on a mm -hmm. fourth and five for Daphne. Gave it to Spanish Ford. They set up at the six. And then on the first play, they're running it in, and at about the one, it gets punched out of Williamson's hands, and it goes out of the end zone after two or three players had a chance to get to it. So it was a touchback. Daphne got the ball back, the Spanish Fort. At that point, you thought, all right, that was their opportunity yep. to get back in this game. You yep. just thought, we even said four or five big plays. You thought, all right, boy, there was your Spanish Fort. There was your chance. If you were going to make something happen. Well, we forgot that there could be seven or eight big plays yeah. or nine or whatever. And, and uh, they just kept coming. Yep. And, the, and they, they kept putting the, the clamps on that offense with Daphne that looked unstoppable in the first half. And they've not been able to run the ball. They haven't really they haven't been able to run the ball much in the second no. half. And Malone's been pressured and passes knocked down at the line of scrimmage. And so now on the two the two point play coming up here. This was just so they've also had a punt of eleven and fourteen yards here in the fourth quarter from both those punts coming from inside their own uh, fifteen. Yep. And so the last scoring drive was a super short one you saw there. Try to get a number here on the Daphne player that's. Oh, there is nothing going right for Daphne here in the second half. Yeah, and that's Talib Graham, their big defensive end who had the big sack. Oh, <laughs> oh correct, that's number eight. That's Jaden Lee, number eight. So I did have a viewer who texted in and, and concurred with me. No bueno on those Daphne jerseys, she said. Doesn't mm. doesn't like those. Hard to read the numbers, said the play-by-play -play guy. Okay, so it's against Spanish Fort after all that. It's a false start against the Toros, so uh. they back it up, and now we'll have the PAT coming by Cam Lytle to try to make it an eight-point game. Good view of it right there. Low snap. And Lytle sneaks it in through the left upright. So that's a big, it's going to be a big play because you, you get that two point and suddenly it's a two to two score game. Yep. 
But now the penalty. Touchdown, two-point conversion, and you've tied the game. But yeah. where's the evidence that that's about to happen? Of course, coming into the second half, where was the evidence that Spanish Fort was going to slow down the Staffney offense at all? 28 unanswered. Just winning the line of scrimmage wow. both sides of the ball. 28 unanswered on the road. Crowd like it. I mean, I don't want to say the game felt over at halftime, but it certainly felt like it was a almost insurmountable lead. It did. I mean, when you watch the way both teams played in yeah. the first half, well, Spanish Ford has really answered the bell. I mean, <laughs> I don't know that we've seen a better example of somebody answering the bell in the yeah. second half. No. No doubt. Green and Miles deep to receive for Daphne. And I don't mean just this season. Set to do the kicking for Spanish Ford. So the unsportsmanlike penalty was against, was it after the play against Spanish Ford? Because they're kicking it off back at the 25. After the touchdown? I mean, I, I'm. So back at the 10. Now. Remember, this, we, we used to see some wild second halves at old Lab Peoples back in the day. Yeah, we were seeing one here between Daphne and Foley. Yep. That Daphne yes. continued on their, uh, their great big, winning big, streak over streak. Foley. Yep. It was the last time Todd Watson ever let us do a Foley game on TV. Last time he talked to you. <laughs> he has ghosted me on some texts since he's gotten to Alabama as well. I will be honest with you. I've sent some. I'm sure he just got a new number. I'm sure that was I'm sure that was it. He's moved around a lot. All right, so you're having trouble running the ball. You're having trouble protecting your elite quarterback. Yeah. W what to do? Give it to Nick Clark. And, and this... This Spanish Fort front on defense is just playing lights out here tonight. And now a flag gets dropped as this play Clark on the care. There is a comes to a close. I mean, it is it's always a little chippy between these always these two. And Ron Coleman, see, maybe he's going to be maybe offsetting. Just to kind of try to keep things. Nope. Oh, yeah. There we go. Yep. Yep. Uh, that's sending a message here like, hey, no, no more after the whistle. That's yeah. what he's trying to say. I, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, these teams play. Sp Spanish Ford plays through the whistle. Yep. That's, so, that's in part how they got back into this game and have taken the lead. You talked about poise, Jim. Let's watch the young quarterback now. Well, second and nine. Malone flips it out of the backfield, able to get that one complete, but breaking a tackle. And now going to be a first down for the Trojans. Oh, Nick Clark. Clark. Looked like Clark was going to be bottled up there, but the homecoming a. king. First down. They had him there. Burkhalter had a chance. They both went for just big hits, Burkhalter and also Josh Powell. And a big, you, you got to wrap up a Nick Clark. He's too big. Yep. You just can't try to hit him up high. Yeah, and he's too good. And now Malone wants to keep it. Malone on his feet. Malone still on his feet inside the fort, and he's down to the 38-yard line. You know, you don't ball see that a lot. You don't see this they ability to run the ball. Play. He's got it. And it's good 19. Exactly. See if they go a little tempo here, maybe, too. Uh, picks up, as we said, 19. Looked like they were maybe going to try to go maybe a little more hurry up. They were so confident in the first half they could call anything, they could run anything. It's not been the case here in the second half. Malone gives it to Clark, and Clark is wrapped up by Williamson. <laughs> Clark on the carry. Williamson, big flop there. Let's see here, is it? Is it LeBron James-esque at the end? Williamson's a big guy. Ah. <laughs> that was kind of funny. No game. Back they go. 
get a couple maybe as McConaughey was on top of him. I mean, they're unsure of letting their quarterback drop back and throw the ball because the pressure's been pretty intense here in the Bring second half. It, it, Spanish Ford has essentially reduced Daphne's playbook. Yeah. Everything that he's throwing is pretty much very quick stuff. Davis up in the slot to the top of the screen. That's Malone's favorite receivers. We're inside five minutes to go in this one. Malone looking the other way. Pressure fires it near side and it's incomplete. Coverage back there by Javante Walton. But again, it was pressure on Malone. All right, Dan Brennan at the 38, fourth and eight, 445 left. You only got one timeout left. I mean, you're, I think you go for it because your punters have, the last two punts have no. totaled 25 yards. No, they're not doing you any favors. You've got to block. You have to protect. Even if you only send somebody out on a pattern, but they've got four wide here. you got to protect them. And here comes the heat. I guarantee it. Fourth and nine. And they are coming. Malone with pressure just wants to air it out to the far side. Airmails his intended receiver. And another turnover on downs for the Trojans. And 438 left. And Spanish Fort will get the football back. Yeah. And, and Malone just had to try to make something happen here because he had the pressure coming from Pannoni, felt it, but just had to try to put it up and let his receiver make a play. But I saw Pannoni off the edge and said, man, they're, they're bringing more than they need to. But it was actually Pannoni that right on time, he uh, threw off the timing of that play. Now we see Nemo Hickson in the backfield as well and they keep Sawyer Wilson in there to block Hickson takes the handoff Hickson gets tripped up good pressure there gets him maybe to the line of scrimmage Hickson on the, but the, the clock will soon become a factor in this Williams one on a lot of time four Daphne. and a half to go but Daphne one timeout Spanish Fort no timeouts you know, I just think maybe the homecoming, the big lead at halftime, something got seeped into the heads of the Daphne Trojans thinking this one was over. And Kenny King didn't think that because he told you at halftime. Yeah. He said, we went, was it 15-0 at hey, half the half last time? Two people involved in the interview that thought it was over. It wasn't him. <laughs> right. Schamberger gives it off to Hickson. Hickson spins in the middle. He'll get to the 44 and they'll stop him. Where's, where's Daphne with timeouts right now, Jim? They got one left. You know, it's, you, you can the warn carry. these kids all you want. You could say personal foul you, personal foul you too. Uh, this thing is so deep-seated with the, the dislike. Two and a half. Mm, the end of the play. Hickson did a little tumble there. So we're now down to three and a half to go. Man, he's a competitor. Third and two. Spanish Fort's gonna have to hurry. They're gonna, they're, they're not gonna get the playoff. They're gonna, they're gonna take a delay a game here. They're gonna, they're not gonna get it off. That's a killer on third and two. Oh. They don't get it off. Mm. Mm, that's where those timeouts being burned. Yeah, they didn't have one to delay a game against the Toros. Mm. There they were with Williamson. Yeah, you could. See, Chase Smith is upset, so third and seven. They're going to keep it on the ground, I guarantee you that. But Smith upset and got to get another play in here. So we're play clock approaching 10. It's going to happen again. They're not going to get another. This is. It's going to happen again. Yeah, they're not. They're going to take back to back delay of games if they don't hurry and get everybody set. They barely get it off. Schamberg gives it off to Hickson, and Hickson's going to be dropped all the way back at the third disaster for Spanish Fort. Yeah. They were trying to set up a little fake Hickson play there. The by and, Lambert. and so they 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 would have been the better they would have been better with a delay of game there than that result. Because now they're all the way back to the 31. Well, think about this, Jim. They were third and three, a chance to get a first down and not end the game, but come really close. Yeah. And instead. They go backwards about 15 yards, and now I've got to punt the ball to yeah. Spanish Fort. Yeah, to, Sp to, uh, to Daphne. Daphne. Yeah, Gardner. 
punt Scoot Miles back there. Line drive kick. Miles at the 25, and wow. he'll be dropped there, and then a flag comes in the middle of the field. Boy, that, you get that line drive punt like that, that is a, sometimes a chance for a great return because sometimes you can run past your coverage. So two minutes exactly to go here. Daphne, one time out. I just can't go those. Oh, that last series. This one against Daphne. Foot being called against the Trojans. Wow. All the way back to the 16. So they're down eight. Line. Two minutes. They visit. Yeah, they've had it five times here in the second half. They've punted it five times. Mm. And not well. No, and they've been pinned back like they are now. So they've got to go 84 yards in two minutes with one timeout and then get a two-point conversion to tie it. They do, and they haven't blocked well for the quarterback since uh, the band left the field. And now no pressure, and this time over the middle of the field, able to get it complete. Off to Myers and a big gain up to the 21. There you go. The confident he had a, had the pocket. Yep. Picks up 25, and they brought no pressure that time. Rush nope. three, dropped everybody back. Yep. So he picks up 25. That's about to change. Malone, near side and dropped. Yeah, they dropped everybody back in coverage. Only rushed four. Second and ten. Miles, the intended 40 left here. Yeah, boy, you gotta get some. If you, you can just see what he does when, when, <laughs> when, he's, when he's got a clean pocket. Yeah, he's beautiful, isn't he? Yeah. But it's football. That pocket's not always clean. All right. Second down and ten here for the Trojans. Now low snap, Malone picks it up, pressure, and he throws. That one's going to be incomplete. Oh, now they're going to call pass interference on that one. Malone's pass ball's incomplete. There is a flag on the play. The snap was low. They collapsed on the quarterback, McConaughey among them back there. Yeah, he Ky had to get rid of it. Kyer was kind of on the back of the receiver. Let's watch here. Boy. Hmm. Not a well-thrown ball. Holding against Spanish Fort. Holding instead of pass interference, yeah, so for the record. We'll give you a first down for the Trojans. 135. At the 48-yard line, Daphne needs a score and two. Empty backfield. Malone pressure coming. McConaughey has him up high, pulls him down. Ball comes loose. I think the Toros might have it. I think Bergholder might have it at the bottom of the pile. They're still wrestling for it. Toros ball. Toros ball, and they will be able to run out the clock. More pressure. Bishop Burkhalter. Daphne has just one timeout remaining. McConaughey had him up high. He comes on the pressure here. Bends low. Gets him. Ball came loose. And Burkhalter falls on it. And Spanish Fort is going to get in the victory formation here tonight and absolutely spoil homecoming for the Daphne Trojans. Schamberger takes a knee, and Daphne will take their final timeout. It was 27 to 7 at the half, it was homecoming. And it looked like the Trojans were 
well on their way to a victory here tonight. But Spanish Fort, their defense, Kenny King. told Dan and I on the field before the game, he said, Spanish Fort's defense, they're monsters out there. And they have been in the second half. Five punts and a fumble in the second half for the Daphne Trojans. And this crowd here is stunned. Daphne out of timeouts. Spanish Fort Just needs to take a knee. Schamberger does that. And the play clock is left to snap it one more time. And the Toros. are going to get a spectacular come from behind victory here tonight on the road in the battle for I-10. And this will be the last snap of the game barring anything crazy. And Schamberger gets it off and the Toros Absolutely stunned the Trojans here in the second half to come away with a victory 35 27. They scored 28 unanswered to get the victory over Daphne here tonight. A non region game, but a huge rivalry game. And we'll take a timeout, and Dan Brennan will be down with Chase Smith on the field. Big win for the Toros tonight, coming from behind to beat Daphne on homecoming night here at the Jubilee Stadium. There, you, you might see the final and not be shocked unless unless you just tuned in 35 27 Spanish Fort they were down 27 to 7 at the half and Daphne looked to be on in cruise control here on homecoming but instead it's the Toros scoring 28 answer to get the victory unanswered to get the victory and Dan Brennan is down on the field with head coach Chase Smith Daddy Smith Daddy Smith Coach Chase Smith 28 unanswered in the second half had him all the way, huh? Yeah, uh, the tail of two halves. I'm so proud of these guys, man. The heart, the resilience, I'm so proud of them. Some, some hard-hitting journalism with a capital J there for Dan Brennan. They wanted the Dr. Pepper belt in a big, in a big way, and they got it. Oh, my bad, man. That's all right, buddy. I got the players apologizing to me. I don't know if we're going to get Coach Smith back in. But again, the, there, there he is. He's, he's, he's coming now on this side. Uh, talk about the, the amazing second half. Jim and I have been doing these games forever. We were trying to remember if we ever saw anything quite like this. Oh, well, I mean, we just told them. I mean, it's about as bad as we could play. We yes. were a lot better than that. We went in and challenged them, and they accepted the challenge. I couldn't be more proud. Well, if you played about as bad as you could play, in the second half, you dialed up about as well as you can play. Yeah, I mean, that's, that just goes by. We're calling the same plays, the same game plan. A minor adjustment here or there, but it's they, they dug in and they showed their heart that I knew they had. I'm just so proud of them. Thanks to Dr. Pepper as well, and uh, congratulations. Thank you. Chase, congratulations for Dr. Pepper and Coca-Cola. Awesome to give you another one. Thank you. Great game provided to us uh, by the Spanish War Tours with a blistering second half comeback. They come back and win it here at Daphne. Uh, player of the game, of course, it's Aiden Schamberger, 20 of 25 on the night, 244 yards, three touchdowns. This is a big, long pass, 44 yards to Gabe Myers here. And this one was on a third and 12. Justin Bonner, one of his two touchdowns tonight, the sophomore. And then on a fourth and six, 
Nemo Hickson with a touchdown here and the floodgates had opened and Bonner his second of the night from Schamberger and the Toros stunned Daphne here tonight. 35-27 with the victory. What a win for Spanish Sport. They jump back in region play next week to take on St. Paul's. Daphne is off next week. They'll have to think about this one until they get back in action in two weeks. Thanks to all of our great partners here. Dr. Pepper, the Coast Guard, Mobile County Sheriff's Office, Greer's, Andy Citroen Injury Attorneys, Roof Doctors, IBEW Local 505, MS Calvert, Fast Signs, the United States Army, and our friends at Herc Reynolds. 35 27, your final score, Spanish Fort with the victory here tonight. They come from behind. They're now 10 and 2 all time against their rivals just south of I 10. And a big win for the Toros. So for Dan Brennan, our great Friday Night Rivals crew, I'm Jim Cox saying good night from Jubilee Stadium with.